was I, I was muted, wasn't I? <laughs> of course I was. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to our regularly scheduled coffee and cursey words. Apologies to all of you. Yep. I was totally on mute. You know, we're professionals here. It just, it happens. I was blowing my nose and I didn't want it to be loud. And so I muted. <laughs> so I muted, but we are going to be answering the internet today, talking about all of the things from the Depp Heard trial that have been swirling around on the internet because there is no trial this week. There is no trial this week because the court is dark. The judge is at a conference. And with that, we are going to be talking about Ben Chu's fist bump, whether Amber Heard did a bump, those PR statements, those PR statements. But we are going to check in with a few of the cases that we have regularly been following here as Lawners. So again, apologies. Um, we will be getting to your questions and super chats. I'm leaving a ton of time for questions today because I know that you have them. Thank you for being here. If it's your first live, go ahead and pop a one in the chat. And as we do on every Coffee and Cursey Words, you let me know what you're drinking and where you're coming in from. I'm here with coffee in Middle Tennessee. It is so good to see all y'all. We're going to roll the intro and we're going to talk about it. We are absolutely going to talk about it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for putting up with my uh, my professional, not professional, muted mic. Law nerds, you're so generous. We are professionals here. It's time to roll. Let's go. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. Sorry, y'all, for those of you that are like, what is happening? That was totally me. Totally me. Good evening. Good morning all over the world. And if you are watching in the replay, replay crew, love you. If you are new to the channel in the replay, there will be um, chapters and timestamps down below. So you can find um, the topics that you're most interested in. If you are new to this channel, we do cover a lot of the law and pop culture that everybody's talking about right now. It seems to only be Depp versus Heard, but there are other cases I've been following. The Rust case quite a lot has gone on with. I am going to be covering that on Friday because I have not had a chance to get into all of it um, with that. But we do have a sentencing coming up for Josh Duggar, a case that I followed while it was going through. There are no new filings in that court record. So with that, his sentencing is still on May 25th. I will be monitoring the news that day as it happens, but I will be live streaming trial coverage. So yes, I will monitor the news. I will talk about it probably separate from Depp and Heard trial coverage because it will be happening during Depp and Heard trial coverage. And I will be live streaming from the 16th through the 27th. Every day that there is court, we will be live streaming. So with that, that's what's happening on that day. We should actually, well, we should actually get to the rest of our quick bits um, because there's so much to talk about with Depp Heard. I feel like if we just get to the quick bits, we're going to be, we're going to be set um, it's so good to see where you guys are coming in from. I've missed doing our regular coffee and cursey words and getting to have like a chitty chitty chat chat. Hello, Trisha. Thank you for the greetings from Zimbabwe. And we are back co-streaming on Facebook during my regular streams, uh, but not for the trial. This is a great question, Alyssa. I would love to tell you I changed my flight. My whole family and I changed our travel plans. Um, so we will be, we will be streaming the entirety of closing arguments on the 27th. Yep. All of them. We're close. We're streaming all of them and they will probably do jury instructions that day. I don't know if the jury will get the case that day or if they will get it on the 31st going into June, but we will see what happens and we will get, we will absolutely get to that. So I am excited. I should also let you know, oh my God, it was the biggest turkey walking around my yard. This thing has to be like four feet tall. It's so distracting. I'm like, bro, I I am too ADHD to have a massive turkey walking around, just walking back and forth in front of my window while I'm streaming. It's the turkeys this year in Middle Tennessee are so freaking large. They're so big. It's something that this like Southern California native is not quite used to. But I should also let you know that um, on Thursday, we have our members only live stream at 11 a.m. We, we, um, 
we alternate the members only live streams. It is a smaller group for those that are members on the channel or on the Patreon. And those generally run about two hours, sometimes more of us talking about the things we want to talk about me reacting to other things around the internet, not just law. And they're always a really good time, but that's going to be 11 a.m. Thursday. And then the following week, second Thursday of every month, we'll be at 7 p.m. so that we can alternate for our international crew because time is real and we don't always want to be in the <laughs> we don't always want to be in the middle of the night um turkeys in the chat to balance Emily's attention thank you ashley as the chat blows up with turkeys you guys have been amazing as i've been rolling around the internet having conversations with other attorneys we always see the flood of purple hearts not everybody it's occasionally people are like what is happening it's like oh the purple wave has arrived hello the law nerds the law nerds are here the law nerds are proud and that is something, God, the law nerds we started on this channel as the um, Toddy Westbrook case was growing Toddy versus uh, her business partner, Clark Swanson. And it was like, what are we? And it's like, well, we're, we're nerds. I mean, I'm nerdy and we're here for the law and we're here to be nerds and we're here to talk about the internet and law. And that's been really absolutely incredible. This community has been not just supportive of me, but tremendously supportive, supportive of LawTube. And as we have so many new members, I mean, I was just talking to Business Insider um, about this trial and about the fascination around this trial. My channel has grown over 117,000 subscribers since the beginning of this channel. It's unheard of. It's unprecedented. But I know there's a lot of new, uh, a lot of new law nerds that are sometimes like, wait, what are we doing here? Don't worry. We've got you. We kind of run our ship like a community. We got a few rules, but most of the rules center around one basic principle of don't be a dick. We're just here to have a conversation. We're not here to diagnose people. We are not mental health experts. We can talk about what we've seen in court. We can talk about how we feel about it, what we think, what we know, but we're not here to tear other people down. We're here to have conversation. And that is something that is really important to me and to this community. So as new people are coming in, as we welcome in new law nerds with open arms, you will see um, the mods just gently reminding. We also have a rule about no caps, which is hard for me too. I like writing in caps, but I am dyslexic and ADHD. They're harder for me to read. So it's hard for me to break up the words when they're not in um, either lowercase or title font. And that's why that rule exists. And Nightbot, our sassy, sassy bot, will sassy you. <laughs> We'll absolutely sass at you. So it's been really incredible. Thank you all for the support. Thank you all for wanting to know the facts. Even when we talk about the stuff that's fuckery, we get to the facts that are underneath it. And that is something um, really critically important to me on this channel because it serves the purpose of this channel, which is, again, to have conversations about the law that governs our lives and what we're seeing so that we all understand what we're seeing. And that is really, really important to me. So let us get into the rest of our quick bits. It's been so long since I've gotten to roll our beloved quick bits bumper, but here we go. Um, also, if you want all of the quick bits, I have like three that are behind that I need to put up on the quick bits channel. I do have a third channel. Yes, Legal ASMR is my second channel. Yes, I will be back on Legal ASMR. I've been meaning there's like three in the hopper that we need to get to for Legal ASMR. But there are two additional channels. Quick Bits is where the short, short stuff is. And then, well, Legal ASMR is curse word free. Exactly what you think it is. Quick Bits. All right, we got to talk about Girardi. This dude. Oh, my God. This dude, this dude, if you have not been following along the Tom Girardi case, it has been the most wild thing. I mean, the this trial is wild, but it's not unheard of. Like, it's not unheard of in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case that ex-spouses accuse each other of things and end up in court. That's not wild to me. It's wild to me that they are celebrities. It's wild that it's playing out on TV. It's wild that the allegations in some regard have grown and changed. It's wild that the pictures don't match the testimony, in my opinion. But it's not as wild to me as an attorney that is accused of stealing over a hundred million dollars from clients who are either the family of those who have lost their lives or those who are very severely injured in catastrophic tort accidents that aren't their fault. And then his wife, now estranged wife, is on a reality show while literally the wheels are coming the fuck off of their entire lives. It is unlike anything I have ever seen. And it's bizarre. There is a new, um, a new 
agreement that we need to talk about. And that new agreement is that the California bar and the trustee in the Girardi case have finally reached a deal about what records to turn over. And this has been an ongoing fight. The California bar is fighting with not just the bankruptcy trustee, but also the LA Times. And while there are times I'm critical of the LA Times, Emily, are you critical of media? Hmm. <laughs> often, often, but also I'm not going to reserve my criticalness because they do something good. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll do both. When it's good, it's good. When it's not, it's not. The LA Times has been a shining light in their investigative journalism into what's going on in this case. They have gone to court with their lawyers to try to force the California Bar, which is the agency that regulates lawyers, to turn over documents about why this is not what the LA Times said to the Supreme Court of California. This is me paraphrasing. Why the fuck was this allowed to go on so long? And they have alluded to in their reporting that Tom Girardi was essentially bribing the California bar or members of the California bar to not investigate him. Lavish parties, invites, political connections. This case has everything. Like, I can make you, I can break you, I'm going to put judges on the bench. Like, it has so much um, wrapped into this now bankruptcy with um, illusions of Maybe there's a criminal element here, too, based on the new Edelson PC filing that we got a preview of that I covered weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago saying, did, you know, did Tom Girardi do this or was Erica part of a front operation for essentially money laundering in a RICO, which is a racketeering organization, and the allegations of the other attorneys and Erica Girardi the Real Housewife of Beverly Hills being engaged in a racketeering organization is some of the wildest shit I've seen. But then at the beginning of this case, I said, this all looks like a Ponzi scheme to me. And here we are. Here we are with this. So let us go to this uh, reporting from Law360. Emily, was your microphone on? No. Is your screen ready to share? Also, no. Are we professionals here? Yes. Look, we kept it together for 98% of the trial. Some days are going to be a little rougher. And today is one of those days. Um, Because why not? Because why not? So this is coming from Law 360. Uh, the California Bar and the trustee for the bankruptcy court um, of the Girardi Keys firm. Sidebar. There are two bankruptcies going on if you're not following this case. This case I started covering in 2020, and we're not even close to being done yet. There are two bankruptcies. There's a bankruptcy of Tom Girardi, the person, where the Pasadena house is being sold, where they're not going to discharge a lot of the debts, where Erica Girardi is going to be left holding a crater of debt, I think. And then there's the law firm bankruptcy. And the law firm bankruptcies were all like the T's come out of did Erica Girardi get millions of dollars towards her music company and her glam squad? And he was paying her credit card bills out of the uh, business operating account from the law firm and, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month being paid to AMX bills, but also one specific incident that's been brought up that of course she denies knowledge of saying that he used a check out of a client trust account and the way client trust account work um, essentially in a very distilled and quick way is that when the money comes in for that client, it goes into your tr client trust account, the money that the attorney is entitled to, attorney's fees and costs come out, and then the rest goes to the client. That's it. Fees, costs, client. Uh, Tom Girardi wrote a check directly out of the client trust account to a jeweler for $750,000 earrings. And I have a short about how I feel about that on TikTok and on Instagram, but $700,000. And $50,000 earrings written out of the client trust account directly to the jeweler as costs. What? Costs? Costs. What costs to the jeweler for $750,000? It's now estimated that those giant earrings that have been on the show are worth um, upwards of a million dollars, et cetera. So these are the things going on in this bankruptcy that are like, what? Because again, when attorneys take money from these cases, this is again, catastrophic tort plaintiff work. They work on contingency. They, when they work on contingency, they get a percentage of the recovery from whatever the company, the a gas company, whatever did the harm. They get a percentage of the recovery. They get their costs, hmm, correction. They take their fees first. 
and then their costs, and then the client gets what's left over. Fees first, and the fees are normally agreed on between like generally 33 and like 40 whatever percent. Then their hard costs, fees, costs. I think they should take their costs first because it would cut their fees. But no, they take their fees off the top first. I don't think it's right. I think that's something that should absolutely change. I think they should take costs first. How much you spent on experts, how much you spent on filing fees, how much you spent to do the case. Costs first, then fees, then it would encourage lawyers to keep their costs low and then give the plaintiff what they're entitled to. But he was writing additional things out of these accounts, which we've seen in the court documents in this bankruptcy. What we don't know is what Erica knew. There was lots of speculation, but we are now getting to the um, California Bar, the organization that is in charge of regulating attorneys and disbarring them if they fuck around and find out with client money. That's in law school. It's like the first thing you lose you learn if you mess with client money, you lose your license. Client money is sacred. Like lawyers will put up with a lot. The California bar will put up with a lot. But if you, if you mess with money, you can get disbarred immediately. Like do not pass go, do not collect your cost and fees. So the California bar and the trustee have finally reached an agreement to turn over their past complaints with regard to Thomas Girardi's law firm. In a proposed deal filed with a California bankruptcy court, the bar and the Chapter 7 trustee, um, Elisa Miller, said the bar's law firm had agreed to shoulder the upfront cost of answering a bar subpoena. Generally, they would say, if you want the documents, you pay for it. Mm. Mm. The agreement by Los Angeles firm, this one, addresses Miller's concerns that complying with the records request would have been unduly burdensome and costly for the Keese estate. The bankruptcy estate, the less money they spend, the bankruptcy estate, that money goes back to literal widows, orphans, um, victims of, of boating accidents and gas pipe bursts. And the things that they were dealing with were horrific. So it goes back to them. Facing criticism for its handling of decades of complaint against Girardi, he's had over 100 lawsuits against him and his law firm, as detailed by one of the most recent court filings. A hundred a hundred. That's not just bar complaints. That's lawsuits against him, accusing him of taking client money and and doing these things that are completely improper. And nothing ever happened at the state bar level. It is really some of the most appalling shit that I have ever seen. So facing criticism for its handling of decades of complaints against Girardi, the bar announced earlier this year that it was hiring an outside firm to look over whether it had mishandled its oversight. Whether you have mishandled the oversight? How about how it happened that the oversight was mishandled? And to be fair to the state bar, that again is my licensing agency, the state bar of California, the individuals that were involved in this are largely gone from the state bar because this is decades past. But it is reprehensible. If he had gotten disbarred when the third lawsuit or fourth lawsuit happened, the victims in these cases wouldn't have been harmed because he wouldn't have been their lawyer. And it wouldn't have been trading on the name and the illusion of wealth. But if you want to see my whole feelings on that, look at the most recent video I have about it. The Edelson PC latest lawsuit, the RICO allegations, really lays out, lays all of this out. The attorneys I still think are the most culpable. Erica Girardi, however, is the biggest name in all of this. Though the attorneys, the ones running the firm, um, I think have the most culpability based on everything I've seen so far. Um, While details of the investigation must remain confidential to give it the greatest chance for success. mm -hmm, This stipulation is a public record that demonstrates the state bar's progress, continuing effort and resolve in pursuing this investigation thoroughly and completely. Girardi's firm has been shut down since late 2020. Yeah. When all of this, when the house of cards fucking tumbled, when an Illinois judge found that Girardi had taken at least $2 million from client settlements he had negotiated for survivors of the Lion Air crash, the little literal widows and orphans of it all. Numerous other former Girardi Keys clients have since come forward with allegations of theft, accusations that have swirled for decades but never resulted in a public bar sanction. Um, it seems that people were very, very much afraid of him. So there's that. 
The claims go back until the mid-1990s before his portrayal as a crusading lawyer in the 2000 firm, uh, film Aaron Brockovich made him a nationally recognized figure. Girardi was placed in a conservatorship last year after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. After the bar accused Girardi of stealing some $2.26 million from client in three cases, not the Lion Air cases, other cases, the bar judge this year called for the state Supreme Court to disbar him and hit him with a $2.2 million restitution bill for the misappropriated misappropriation and acts of moral turpitude. Girardi did not answer the ethics charges and has not been formally disbarred at the state level yet. Last summer, the bar said an audit had revealed unspecified mistakes in its investigations into Girardi and proposed various reforms. <laughs> in April, the state audit report had found that the bar had repeatedly let off attorneys who had been accused dozens of times of stealing from clients. The amount of fear they put into you in law school is disproportionate to what is actually happening. And it's odd to me, like actually just like follow through on what they say in law school. Like if you fuck with client funds, you get disbarred. Like, why is that a hard rule? Like, just don't mess with it. I don't understand. And if you're, if you don't want to deal with money, don't go into client work. Don't go into plaintiff's work. If you don't want to deal with contingency fees. That's, that's okay too. Like there's lots of ways to law. Um, the, the report, the state audit report came out mostly in the LA Times is where I saw it being reported. But the state audit report found that the bar repeatedly let off attorneys who had been accused dozens of times of stealing from clients. The audit also found failures and uh, to consistently track staffers' conflicts of interests. Hmm. Interesting. Spot patterns of alleged misconduct and properly investigate reports of overdrawn trust accounts. That's the money stuff. Um, Sweet One said he has Alzheimer's. How can he still be licensed? They have not finished the disbarment procedures. He's been disbarred at the federal level, not at the state level. It's uh, Again, it's pro forma, but his license was suspended due to the conservatorship, so he can't practice, but he has not been formally disbarred. Like Being suspended is way different than being disbarred, and the effect is the same, but like the sting of it is much different. So he has not been formally disbarred um, disbarred yet, but that is just a matter of time. It's one of the things I'm like, why they've recommended it months and months and months and months ago. And we just haven't seen it yet. So from one housewife to another, we are going to talk real quick about a subpoena that I've been tracking. And then we're moving into debt versus heard one more quick bit. Thank you all. And for those of you over on the Facebook, I know we don't have uh, mods over on Facebook to kind of jump in on what's going on. I will try to pull those comments, but you, what you can't see is the 20,000 people over on, on YouTube. So the comments are going very quickly for me and they're just going to, but you can always pop over on, on the YouTubes as well. If you would like, this is not what I was trying to pull up. What I was trying to pull up is Jen Shaw and my swoop. We're going to swoop and talk about Jen Shaw just real quick um, because we love pop culture legal here. Jen Shaw and her legal team have been dealing with this subpoena for ABC over the Hulu documentary, The Housewife and the Shaw Shocker, I think is what they called it. If you're not following Jen Shaw in this case, I'm going to give you the most brief synopsis because those of you that have been following it are like, oh girl, we know. Jen Shaw is on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. While she was filming second season that just aired, <laughs> it sounds... It sounds so ridiculous telling it out loud. The indictment was unsealed as they were filming. They were getting ready to go on a girl's trip. So they're in front of one of the other housewives' businesses, Beauty Lash and Labor, getting into a sprinter van to go to Aspen or somewhere else. They're going somewhere cold. I don't exactly remember where. Was it Aspen? Maybe. The feds descend on this parking lot looking for Jen Shaw, but she had gotten a phone call and had taken off. She gets arrested while cameras are rolling. They search her house. They search her first assistant's house. She's arrested. She's charged with money laundering or conspiracy to commit money laundering and conspiracy to commit wire fraud in connection with a large telemarketing scheme. So these allegations are going to trial in July of this year. Jen Shaw's legal team has done some things that I've been like, huh, what, what is happening with this? They... The most recent of those was a subpoena to ABC and others saying, give us all of your unaired footage of the housewife and the Shaw Shocker. Give us all of this information. But then they didn't list with specificity the information. That went to a hearing um, a few weeks ago. But of course, we were doing, you know, 
Depp heard things. And the ruling just came out from the judge on May 5th. So we're going to take a look at the judge smacking down this uh, subpoena, uh, much in the way that I thought would happen. Because when we read the subpoena, we went, um, that's not what's going to happen. So this subpoena, the subpoenas issued by Jen Shaw have been yeeted out of court immediately. And that's where we are at. So with that, um, we've got in late November of last year, the news division of ABC released a television documentary called The Housewife and the Shaw Shocker. Are you all going, how is a, a Hulu documentary coming into court? Yeah, this is the world we live in now where reality television, celebrity, and court have all blended in a bizarre way that you've got ABC being subpoenaed in a criminal proceeding in the Southern District of New York for behind-the-scenes footage and interviews that they did to talk about Jen Shaw's case. What is happening? So, the housewife and the Shaw Shocker discussed defendant Jen Shaw's work as a cast member of the reality show, The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and also described the telemarketing fraud scheme underlying the indictment here against Shaw. They did a good job with that. According to Elaine Murphy, the senior edit editorial producer of the documentary, ABC News staffers interviewed both non-confidential and confidential sources and collected, quote, a vast trove of documents, footage, and communications as part of a journalistic process that produced, quote, thousands of documents and materials such as emails, texts, drafts, pages of notes, and digital media files. According to Ms. Murphy, no prosecutors involved in this criminal action were interviewed by ABC. So the inner, they didn't interview the prosecutors that were prosecuting Jen Shaw, which would have been, um, improper. So <laughs> that's an ongoing case. I mean, attorneys can give press statements about pending cases. It's generally not done by prosecutors. They, you normally see with the, the, um, the federal prosecutors that there will be a statement from the office. This indictment's been unsealed. This arrest has been made. This trial date has been set, but that's about it. Very factual things, dates, and that's about it. So not much more than that, but there were federal prosecutors that talked in the ABC documentary about these types of cases. Because again, fraud, fraud, fraud. And this telemarketing scheme has covered three different prosecutions with 10 plus defendants in each prosecution. So this isn't just Jen Shaw. This is so much bigger than that. And it's wild. Shortly after the documentary aired, Shaw moved to dismiss the indictment and seek discovery. She had a dry contact, y'all, and seek discovery and sanction the government for the involvement of two supervisory special agents from Homeland Security Investigations as interviewees in the documentary. This court denied that motion in full on December 10th, 2021. The court yeeted it pretty quickly, too. This judge is not fucking around at all. On February 11th, Shaw served a subpoena on ABC News in another effort to obtain materials related to the documentary. I like that the court says another effort. The court's like, I see you. Stop it. The subpoena requests production of the following seven categories of document. This is, uh, no, this is not how you subpoena things. All video footage including raw footage, made or used in connection with the documentary. This request includes but is not limited to any video footage that was not aired in The Housewife and the Shaw Shocker. All documents and communications between ABC News and any member of the prosecution team concerning the documentary. These are not uh, identified specifically in any way. Identification of all government agents or other members of the prosecution team who provided information to ABC News, any and all releases, waivers, or other documentation, all video footage, all, any and all, any and all, any and all. What if anything? Again, what if anything doesn't fix a bad question at trial and any and all doesn't fix a nonspecific subpoena? The journalistic privilege protects this information. Uh-huh. Like we knew that going in. The United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit recognizes a journalistic privilege in light of the need to protect the public interest in being informed by a vigorous, aggressive, and independent press. I mean, I've got thoughts about where we're at with that right now, but journalistic privilege is protected, and ABC News is clearly a news agency. So the court goes on to explain to the lawyers what they already should have known, that they weren't going to get any of the shit that they asked for. Because Shaw has not shown that the subpoena seeks materials of likely relevance to a significant issue in the case, she has not overcome the journalist privilege applicable to the materials sought by her subpoena. Yeah, her, is, her subpoena is like, give us all your shit. 
It's not true. The requirements set forth in the United States versus Nixon have not been met, and that is the test for whether the journalistic privilege can be overcome. It can be overcome in some ways, but they have not done it here. So finally, ABC News contends that the subpoena is on its face unreasonable and oppressive mm -hmm, because it imposes an enormous burden to search for and produce all files of all persons who worked on the documentary and produce a large volume of material. The court agrees. Oh, really? The court agrees that Shaw's subpoena would burden ABC News with heavy costs of subpoena compliance for the impermissible purpose of allowing Shaw to, quote, sift through press files in search of information supporting her defense. That's not how that works. Thus, the subpoena fails to satisfy the requirements set forth in that Nixon case. Conclusion, because the journalistic privilege protects the material sought by the subpoena and the subpoena fails to satisfy the requirements of the Nixon case, ABC News motion to quash, the subpoena served upon it is hereby granted. I imagine that the other subpoenas served will also be granted in short time. So with that, we are just about wrapping up our quick bits. Chat for all of you that are new, on Tuesdays, we cover quick bits and then we cover our main topics and then we go to questions. So that is how all of my live streams work when we are not streaming trial. Quick bits, generally the first 45 minutes, and then we get into our main topic, and then we get into questions. So that is what we are doing. And the law nerds, the ride or die law nerds are like, what's happening with all of the cases that we've been covering before Johnny Depp and Amber Heard went to trial? And this is what's happening. Journalistic privilege still prevails in the Shaw Shocker case. So let us move on to Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard and answering not just your questions, but also answering the internet. I'm gonna talk about why, why we are even entertaining it at all. So I, part of the reason I'm entertaining it is because I've gotten so many questions about the ancillary things going on in this trial. I love that you guys tag me. I love it. I love seeing what's going on on TikTok and Twitter. And I mean, I don't go on Facebook much, but TikTok and Twitter and Instagram, I love seeing what other people are saying about the trial, how they're talking about the trial, how the general public is perceiving the trial or memeing the trial. I love looking at all of it. It's wild to me how some of the things have grown. And I think there's explanations for some. Some of it, I think, is wild, wild conspiracy theories. And I'm not telling you not to love a conspiracy theory. I'm just saying take everything with a healthy dose of skepticism. Amanda, this, this caught my eye. Um, congratulations on passing the bar exam. That is a very big deal. Congratulations. Yay. Um, you probably know the rules of hearsay better than any of the attorneys that we've seen in court because <laughs> you just took the bar. So congratulations, law nerds. Yes, congratulate away. So with this, I've been very interested in seeing what's going on. Normally, I address these more on like Instagram and Twitter, but I think they warrant a conversation about the things that we're seeing in court and the things we're not seeing in court, especially when it comes to like Ben Chu's fist bumping of things. But the first thing I want to talk about is something that I caught yesterday when I was recording the podcast. And for all the members, you were there um, behind the scenes as I was recording the podcast. I don't know if I circled back to it or not, but this is something that came up for me while recording the podcast. And I was very surprised that I hadn't caught it uh, before and was, wait, this is the wrong link. Where is it? I want to find the one. I, here we go. So I'm going to queue up that video. It's going to be a little inception of like me watching me um, because I've got it queued up. So with that, we are going to go to something that caught my eye. Ah, I had it timestamped and I just moved it. Emily be a professional. All right. We're going to pull this up so you can watch, you can watch the tech things happen as I try to cue this up to the right place. We are going to watch, um, Elaine Bredehoff, AKA Umbridge call Amber Heard to the stand for the first time. I am fascinated. So hopefully we can hear the court audio. I talk a little bit through it, but we're going to get through it all together. We're going to have a little bit of lawception here. Um, apologies for lawception, but here we go. It's lawception. Oh, the bathroom. Legal bites team think the cross was bad. I mean, I have a different take, but so the jury's coming in. I, I, and we're going to wait for the jury to come all the way in. And then the judge is going to say, call your next witness. And that's where we are going to rejoin this. 
as the court asks Bretta Hoff to call her next witness. And this is the counselor. All right, your next witness. Your Honor, we'd like to call Laura Amber Heard to the stand. Did you hear what she said? Your Honor, we would like to call Laura Amber Heard to the stand. What? 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 And whoop, there it is. All right, let's wait till Amber Heard gets onto the stand without me yelling about the fact that we are now on this because we see Elaine call her Laura Amber Heard. And I was thinking, okay, um, is Amber her middle name? I'm confused because Elaine called her to the stand as Laura Amber Heard. And at the moment I commented on it, but it didn't strike me as such a big deal until maybe they're laughing. Maybe that's what Ben Chu's laughing about right there with Johnny Depp is, oh my God, her lawyer didn't even call her by the right name. It didn't strike me as such a big deal until we got into Dr. Hughes being called Dr. Curry um, and me reflecting on that. So we get Amber Heard back up on the stand and her attorney says, what's your of name? Amber. Shush, Emily. Her attorney says, okay, what's your name? With you please state your name. Yes, it's Amber Laura Heard. And what is And you see the smirk? I think she's smirking at her lawyer because her lawyer said Laura Amber Heard. And now we're getting her saying, no, it's Amber Laura Heard. So Umbridge not only called Dr. Hughes, Dr. Curry multiple times, but she called her client the wrong name when she called her to the stand. How, how does her lawyer not know that it's Amber Laura Heard and not Laura Amber Heard? I am so confused. And while I pronounce names wrong all the time, this has been her lawyer for years. Like four years, but look at Amber Heard's face. She's like, it's Amber Laura Heard Umbridge. It's the wrong name. That's not my name. So I'm shocked. Like they've done depositions. They've done meetings. They've done the amount of things they have done together to call her by her name in her wrong order is just is just wild to me, but it has happened so much in this trial. And again, this is not a trial that just has sprung upon them. This is years and years and years of work to get to. We now call to the stand. This is the moment when your client is taking the stand. This is the key to your case. This is your moment. We call to the stand, Laura Amber Heard. And then Amber Heard gets onto the stand and is like, Amber Laura heard. And we're all like, woof, that's um that okay. We've gotten everybody's name wrong. So maybe it makes it less important that everybody's name is wrong. But it seemed to me that A, Johnny Depp's team was giggling at it, and B, that Amber Heard seemed annoyed. But Elaine should have had, if if this was going to be a concern, on a notepad, should have said Amber Laura heard so that if that was a concern, she wouldn't have gotten it wrong on the top of every single one of my witness pages. It always had the name I was calling the witness by. And I would ask the witnesses to give me the connect, connect, correct pronunciation of their name and make sure that as I was going into court, this is all that's in my mind. I'm just blown away that where we're at is calling your witness to the stand by the wrong name. Like who, what it what and it seemed again even if it's a minor mistake does it make your client feel like you are the best vehicle to tell their story does it make your client feel that you have their back when the first thing that you do as you are trying to help them tell their story to a jury in a case that could cost them you know millions and millions of dollars does it make your client feel like you've got them when you call them to the stand by the wrong name? Now, the jury might not have caught it. Um, it might not have been a moment. They might have been like, huh, but they might not have caught it. But Amber Heard caught it. And I think that Depp's team caught it. And it's another one of those moments where they're like, hmm. but you're paying the the amount that you're paying these lawyers to help you tell your side of the story 
in this lawsuit. And then Amber Heard gets on the stand and says, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. You want your client to feel that you've got them, that you're the lawyer and you, they can rely on you. And how do you do that when they start off calling you the wrong fucking name or at least calling you your name in the wrong order? It, I, it, I just, I was blown away. And at first I was like, oh, maybe, maybe her name is Laura Amber Heard and she goes by her middle name, not unheard of. But then she takes the stand and goes, Amber, Laura Heard. The same way that Dr. Hughes, after she was called Dr. Curry, goes, Dr. Hughes. It's like, this is not who I am. But Elaine at that point did actually facepalm herself and went, anyway. So with that, it was just one of those moments that is not... It might not be a big deal for the jury. It might not be a big deal for those in the audience. I think the person it was probably the biggest deal for was Amber Heard. Everyone deserves good representation. Everyone deserves to feel like their attorney has their back. And I wonder if when she got on the stand, she felt like, oh, oh, this is how today is going to go. This is how today is going to go. And with that, we need to... Um, we need to get to some of the other internet things before we get to all of your questions. So the interesting thing was the Ben Chu fist bump. So I'm going to pull up that clip and we're going to talk about it because we need to talk a little bit about evidence, what comes into a trial, what doesn't, opening the door, what that means, what that looks like. And we're going to talk about that in context of this clip. I still don't know what she's drinking on the stand. This clip actually shows the purple water bottle a little bit better, but Let's see. Let us go to, hopefully this isn't too loud, but I know that my mods will tell me if it is. All right, let us pull this up and go. Let's see. Um, I just want to make sure my audio is not going to clip. We're, we're trying to not clip as best we can. All right, let's play this and talk about Ben Chu's fist bump because he was so excited. He was, up, he was up the first flight of stairs. Again, I'm on the mezzanine, which is in between two flights. This is talking just to orient everyone as to time. I mean, the timeline of this trial is so far afield. I don't have the time know what year we're in when they're talking about things. And Dr. Hughes tried to say, well, when we were talking about that with Amber Heard, she was oriented to a different period of time. I'm like, we're all oriented to a different period of time. I have no idea when these events are taking place. And the lawyers have not made it clear um, where we're at. But with this... This is the staircase incident. Now, I don't know when the staircase incident happened. It seemed that it happened in December 2015 based, I'm going off of the nursing notes when the nurse showed up and that was the nurse Filati that testified at the end of Depp's case. But this is the staircase incident. Travis McGivern testified about it. Johnny Depp testified about it. Nurse Filati testified about it a bit. And now Amber Heard's testifying about it. Flights of stairs. He bolted up the steps. Um... And I, I, I don't know, I don't know how he managed to get his hand in my hair so fast, but he had his um, hand on the back of my, my head, my hair, and kind of was yanking me down. And uh, it's interesting to me again, that she makes a pulling action as she's taught. It's just the way she testifies is interesting for me. I'm not a behavior expert. It's just the way she testifies is, is outside of my experience with other witness testimony and i've done a lot of witness and victim testimony so it's odd um hit me in the face with this cast he had and we saw a lot of testimony from johnny depp about that when his hand was recovering from MRSA. um i just remember this this brief struggle we had before we kind of break away whitney my sister um, all of a sudden put herself in between Johnny and I. So what we need to talk about with Whitney, the sister, is we have, from this staircase incident, what we have is um, we have Johnny Depp's testimony about it, Travis McGivern, the security guard's testimony about it, we now have Amber Heard's testimony about it, and we have Nurse Filati's testimony about it. I don't know if we are going to see Whitney's testimony about it. And when we have a case like this where the two parties, Depp and Hurt, are tearing, telling very different stories, it is most likely that a jury is going to want to see what the third parties say and evaluate the third party testimony first. And anything else that we get with um, videos, 
photos, um, nursing notes, all the other documentary evidence around it, not just the testimony on the stand. It's very realistic that the jury says, okay, the two of these individuals have very different stories. Let's take their stories out of it and listen to the third parties first. So I think the jury is very much going to want to hear from Amber Heard's sister, Whitney. But what we know from outside of court that the jury doesn't know and probably will never know is that um, Amber Heard's sister never finished her deposition. She said that she wasn't feeling well and she needed to reschedule and Heard's team never made Whitney available to finish the deposition. So at this point, it is unlikely that Whitney can come in and testify because she never finished her deposition. So it's unlikely that we will see testimony from Whitney, but I imagine that's exactly what the jury is going to want to hear. They heard from Travis McGivern, who was there. They're going to want to hear from the other third party that was there so that they can say, look, this is outside of this, but where, where are we finding the middle ground of this? Um, so with that, let us continue looking at what she says about Whitney, because this is actually getting to the point of Ben Chu being like, yeah, buddy, um, I've I've fist bumped it. I've done I've done this in court. Um, but normally I didn't I only had a detective sitting next to me. I did not have a fucking fleet of lawyers. They have a, a, a brigade of attorneys on both sides here. Uh, she just threw herself like in the line of if she threw herself, how did she not throw herself down the stairs? I have questions. Fire or whatever. She just all of a sudden was there. I was trying to get Johnny to stop. Um, her back was to the staircase. Okay. I could break down this testimony forever, but we would be here literally for fucking ever. And I'm trying to get to the Ben Chu fist pump, but we, there are points of this testimony when she talks about Whitney's back being to the stairs, but then not. But she's also saying Whitney's in between the two of them. And this is what's hard for me to visualize. If Whitney's in between the two of them and her stair, her back is to the staircase, who else is behind her? Because if you have a sandwich of people, one, two, three, if Whitney's back is to the staircase, who's behind Whitney closer to the staircase? Because uh, unless they're on the side and Whitney's in the back this way with her back to the staircase and the two of them are on the sides, but then everyone's on the precipice of the stairs, not just Whitney. Questions? And Johnny swings at her, and I just see my little sister with her back on face. Her. I'm going to rewind this just a bit. How is she pointing towards the stairs? Y'all just evaluate this for yourself before we get to why Ben she's excited. Back face, back, back face, back face, back face. What? Which part of her is facing the stairs? Her back to the staircase. Okay, we got to go back a little bit further because I was talking. Apologies. Back on face. Her. I didn't go back far enough. See my little sister with her back on face, her back to the staircase, and Johnny swings at her, and I don't even look. He he's going okay. Her back, her face, whatever is to the stairs, but he is very much wrapped at attention. I'm going to do that one more time with the back face, back face, because then we see this attorney's response to, oh, are we, how is this changing right now? Because it's important to the attorney. And I just see my little sister with her back on face, her back to the staircase and Johnny swings at her and I Attention. don't even wait, don't even wait for any other, I don't hesitate. I don't wait. I just, in my head, instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs. And now we are going to see what Ben Chu responds. And I swung at him. And, and that little motion that we're getting over here of him, Kate Moss and the stairs going, yeah, we're going to talk about why. We're going to finish out the rest of this bit of testimony before we get to why he's looking at Camille Vasquez so excited and Camille Vasquez sitting right here in the gray suit is the attorney that's going to be doing cross-examination. All of my relationship to date with Johnny, I had. And he's trying to suppress a smile because he knows what his legal team knows. So we're going to just, me doing the play-by-play. -play. Did we go to the tape today, Emily? Yes, 
we went to the tape. We're not done with the tape today. We're going to, we're going to get into varying levels of fuckery with the tape. We're going with court tape and then we're going with internet, internet, complete internet conspiracy theories. Swung at him and all of my relationship to date with Johnny, I hadn't landed a blow and I, for the first time hit him, like actually hit him square in the face. This testimony, by the way, all feels very authentic. Once she gets to hitting him, there's no more starts and stops. There's no more weird cadence. Once she gets to hitting him, it all flows very smooth. When she's at this, when she's talking about how her sister threw herself in the line of fire, it's again kind of dramatic language, um, very much using analogy and and very much trying to be like here, there, wherever. But once she gets into her landing a blow on Johnny Depp. The way she talks change, and it all goes very smoothly. And the way she describes it is the way Depp describes it, is the way Travis McGivern describes it. Everything up to that is, is uh, 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 but once she gets to how she hit him in the face, it's all very consistent and smooth, which is a different way of seeing her testify from almost everything else we saw. Hit him. Like, actually hit him. Like, she's not Squ pulling weird faces. She, her face isn't doing, like, a whole lot of, like, like, like her face isn't doing a lot of stuff. She's just talking. And this part of the testimony seems like some of the most consistent testimony we've seen. So with that, I backed it up so you could see it. So, um, and I, for the first time hit him, like actually hit him. This all feels Square consistent. In the face. He didn't push my sister down the stairs. And then they're on a and hot all of my time. Something all my time of being in that relationship to that point. <sighs> and now we get back to the pulling. Hadn't faces. even landed one. On and then we get back to the pulling faces, but with, um, with, he didn't push my sister down the stairs. What she had said about that was he was trying to punch her. He did. She never said push her. Here's why I think Ben Chu is, is looking at Camille Vasquez going, oh, she said it. Not everything that's happened pre-trial has been public record. Some has, some hasn't. There is most likely a pre-trial motion that was keeping certain items of evidence out unless the door was opened. I joke about it in a Miley Cyrus coming like a wrecking ball. Sometimes the door is opened, like pushed open. Sometimes the door in the entire wall is knocked over. What it means when you say opening the door is it means that something that is going to be kept out of testimony unless something else happens is what we're talking about. So, hey, this is probably more prejudicial than probative, meaning it's more damaging than it's helpful to the jury to decide. More prejudicial than probative. But if something changes, if testimony happens, if it's brought up by the party that it could be more prejudicial than probative against, they've opened the door. They've tiptoed in to the door and now you get to ask about it. I think this happened with Dr. Hughes and Amber Heard's past arrest. The court clearly disagreed. They went up to sidebar for a long time. And I'm like, the door is like a sliding door. You know that scene in Ace Ventura where he's going like, ah, to show the door is soundproof. That is how I felt that they opened the door. All, all I saw in my head, I just remembered Jim Carrey in this movie. And it was called Ace Ventura. And he did a whole lot of, all righty then. And I was thinking of Ace Ventura. And there was this moment and he's on the balcony and he has the door in his hand and he's screaming at the top of his lungs and he's flinging the door back and forth to show that the door to hear the scream must have been closed from the outside. And he's going, ah. sorry, that's my Amber Heard testimony. But that's what I'm thinking of when the door was open with Dr. Don Hughes to ask about Amber Heard's past arrest because it obviously matters if Amber Heard has been previously accused of domestic violence and into the point that she was arrested for it. So that mattered. I thought the door was open there. The court disagreed. Door was not opened. They weren't allowed to ask about it. But now that we've gotten to her bringing up Kate Moss, it seems to me that the door has been opened for them to inquire about something else, something that they were very excited about asking her about. Because when the court rules these things out, Amber Heard knows what that ruling is. There is no doubt her attorneys talked about what that ruling was. And there's no doubt her attorneys say, if you do this, the consequence is this. And if you bring this up, the consequence is they get to bring this up. So no doubt they told her that. 
And so whatever it is, and we don't know if it's going to be bringing Kate Moss in as a rebuttal witness saying that never happened. We don't know if it's going to be opening the door for another line of questioning about this incident that she's alleging. But if it comes up in cross-examination, we're all going to be here together on the internet going, that was what they opened the door for. And we're going to be very excited. So it could come up in cross-examination, which I think is most likely because he turned to Camille Vasquez and was like, Ugh. and the reason he turned to her is she's the attorney doing the cross-examination. So in the week break since this testimony, they now get to prep whatever that moment was in court where they're like, she, I can't believe she said it. Cause that is a oof. She stepped into not a trap, but she, that's an unforced error. She didn't have to bring up, I'm thinking of Kate Moss in the stairs. I don't think his attorneys are just going to let this go. She put it out there. The jury probably has no idea what the fuck she's even referring to. So for her, it's an unforced error because the jury doesn't have any impact of he's thinking of Kate Moss. The jury doesn't know y'all like that. I follow celebrity culture. I had no idea what she was talking about until I was on the interwebs and people are like, oh, she's made this allegation before. I'm like, I had no fucking clue. And I'm probably more dialed into this jury, this trial and the UK trial than a lot of the internet. Not all, definitely. There's people way more dialed than I am, but more than the jury should be. And I didn't know what this obscure reference was. So she doesn't do any damage to Johnny Depp by bringing it up. The jury's like, why the fuck is she name dropping Kate Moss? But it's not, it doesn't conjure up an image for them. It conjures up an image for her, but it doesn't do any damage to Depp on the, on, you know, in the testimony, but then it opens the door for them to be able to get into whatever they want to get into. That's why Ben Shu's so excited. I think they opened the door to testimony that was previously excluded. They will probably bring that up in motions with the court. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will wait until cross-examination and get into the line of questioning, wait to draw an objection from Umbridge, and then go up and say, uh, but your honor, on the 15th, on transcript line 36, line 12, she said, I thought of Kate Moss, and therefore the door was open, and we are going to walk through that door. We are going to be here. Hello. The door is opened. Cross-examination. Let us go on. So I think that this is going to come back to bite her. I don't think she needed to do it. And I see the chat saying, did you see Elaine's face when she said that? I haven't seen that, um, but I've seen a number of you saying it like there was a reaction from her legal team. If her legal team was trying to actually go through the pretrial motions to keep things out and won those motions for her to mess up what they did by saying this, that was not needed testimony at all is going to be like a, like her legal team is just going to be like, why would you do that? You knew that if you brought this up, it opens the door for other shit to happen. So when we get back on the 16th, um, we should be getting into cross in the afternoon. And we'll, maybe that'll be one of the first things. I doubt it. I think it'll be buried. So we'll see. So we'll see. Um, hello, Law and Lumber. Good to see you. You are famous around LawTube with your, I'm dropping things, with your bed breaking it's a great video. We'll talk about, we're going to talk about Lawn Lumber's video in a moment. It's good to see you, Rob. How much do you want to bet that Vasquez has all of her full direct testimony memorized backwards? For, oh, of course. And tabbed and highlighted. Um, I put solid money on that here for all the fuckery. It's nonsense. And she gets a week of going over these transcripts. And I imagine with the amount of time that Vasquez um, has been doing this, that she knows, and this is why you give the different attorneys, different testimony to cover. I imagine that Vasquez has in her mind the exactly what she said in the UK case and all of the other inconsistencies. It is just ingrained in her. This is her witness. And that is why different, different attorneys are dealing with different large witnesses because you can't internalize all of that. I mean, you can internalize all of that for an entire trial, but not a trial with this much evidence easily. And I imagine that Camille knows all of it. And the second that she says something, Camille's like, nope, transcript this. Nope, UK testimony that. And if she doesn't remember, she's going to say to someone on her team, I remember she said something different in the UK. I'm not sure which page can you find it. She is going to be ready for all of this cross-examination. So that is Amber Heard on the stand with an unforced error saying, um, I, I was thinking of Kate Moss. Well, 
Whatever you thought has opened the door for something to come back and bite you in the ass. I hope that name drop was worth it to you. I don't think it's going to be, but we're not, we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to wait and see how it, um, how it all comes down. So with that, we need to talk about not the PR statements yet, but um, Mm -hmm. do we have a booger sugar issue with Amber Heard on the stand chat? I don't think we do. I don't. Um, I really don't, I can't fathom it. But then again, I came into this case after watching the, after watching the UK case go down where the judge really discounted Johnny Depp because of his drug use, I, which I thought was unfair. The judge in the UK case was really like, oh, well, he, he uses drugs. Therefore he either doesn't remember, or he's a liar, or I'm giving all the credibility to her testimony and none to his, which I don't think a jury's going to do here at all. I think a jury's going to evaluate both of them and possibly discount both of their testimony um, and look for third-party evidence first and then see what the third-party evidence squares with. I think that's probably what this jury will do because it makes sense. Okay, let's, let's not look at what they're saying. Let's look at what the third parties are saying, evaluate their credibility, and then see which stories there's matches with. I think that's a very reasonable way for the jury to approach this. But the internet has gone nuts thinking that um, Amber Heard is, in fact, um, doing the drugs. Me. Are you old, Emily? Yes. Are you trying? Forget it. Monetization. Be damned. People think she's doing cocaine on the stand. Now, I'm going to play the video. I'm going to talk about why I don't think she is, but we're going to talk about it. This is all over the interwebs, TikTok everywhere, but we're just going to go through. The attorneys are clearly up at sidebar based on the audio and um, we need to have, we need to have a conversation. So this is the attorneys talking. Their talk is irrelevant. She looks at a Kleenex and it looks, it does look like she puts her finger in her nose. It does. It does look like she puts her finger in her nose. I don't think any of this is going to come up on cross. I think it's odd that she looks at her Kleenex. I don't remember looking at my Kleenex. I don't remember looking at a Kleenex before I like bring it to my face. If I am going to bring it, like I know where my nose is. I know exactly where my nose is. Um, So I don't need to evaluate my Kleenex. So that I don't need to see. You guys are saying, look at how she rolls her sleeves. I don't have that in this clip. Um, What I have is her looking at the Kleenex after she procures it. I don't remember seeing her pull it from the Kleenex box on the stand, but let's see. This is, this is not the one where she stops for the camera to take a picture. No, that one, she absolutely stops with the Kleenex. We'll, we'll pull that one up next, but this is, this is her looking at what the attorneys are doing, looking at the judge, looking down at her Kleenex, pulling it to her face and doing something. Could that be something to make her cry? It absolutely could be. Could it be that she has a runny nose, which it doesn't seem like, but could it be that she has a runny nose and is trying to like suck that back in? Why would it only be one nostril? There are so many questions here. I think it's more likely that she is trying to make herself cry. I really do. Um, let's see. Can I play this playback speed? Yes, I can play this slower. Here, we'll go to we'll go to slow playback speed. I'm going to turn off the audio so we don't have to deal with the annoyance. And we're just going to play it back slow. It's a very strange thing. It's a very, very strange thing to happen on the stand. It's very odd that she is looking at the, the tissue. It's very odd the way she's checking with the judge. It's a sus moment. Um, her finger goes into her nose. Like her finger goes into her nose. Could she be picking a booger? Yes, she could. Could she? Yes, she could. So um, it's just, it's an odd thing. And then, and then she's wiping her nose with the back of her hand, not with the Kleenex. So if you're wiping your nose and trying to boogie it, why aren't you wiping your nose with the Kleenex? Why are you wiping your nose with your fingers? I still think she's probably trying to either sniff up a booger or make herself cry. I don't think she's doing Coke. I really don't. I don't. I really don't. But why wipe, why wipe your nose with the back of your hand? Why? That's my question. It's an odd motion. It's the internet has clocked it. 
because she is being streamed. But why then wipe with your finger? Like if you're snotty, don't you wipe with your Kleenex? Like what, 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 what? So I think she is trying to make herself cry. I don't think she's doing cocaine on the stand. I really, really don't. But if your nose is running in court and if you have a booger, why aren't you using your Kleenex? Why are you using your finger? So I have a lot of questions. This clip has been all over the internet. There are, there are bailiffs in there. I just can't imagine that anyone would come into a courthouse. I mean, I've seen weird things. I can't imagine anyone would come into a courthouse and, and try that on the stand. Can I fathom her having menthol or something on the, on the Kleenex to try to make herself cry? I can fathom that. I can absolutely fathom that. Can I see somebody trying to discreetly pick a booger? Yes, but then why wipe your hand with your no, with your or why wipe your nose with your hand? But I have been tagged in this clip so much. I don't think she's doing coke on the stand. I think it's possible she's trying to make her eyes or nose water. I do think that's possible. I absolutely do. Um, but it's just it's such a bizarre thing, and there's been so many bizarre things in this trial that it's like, why do we need another one? Um, and this. Uh, nor I'm going to pull up, let me pull up the posing for the picture one. Cause it's a different one. Um, let's see more camera. I'm just going to, I didn't have that one queued up. I'm just going to pull it up real quick. Um, let's see. This is a clip of it. Let me just pull this up real quick. Um, this is just a clip from, from the YouTubes where they're talking and let's pull it up. But this is a different clip when she's posing. And when she's posing for the camera, I absolutely think she's posing from the camera. This is coming from a, a channel here on the YouTubes. Let's see what we got. Oh, they've got music on it. We're not going to play that. But this is during testimony. Oh, it's in slow mode. Let's see. Are they hearing testimony? Oh, I've got it in slow mode. <laughs> they've got it in slow mode. No, that's me. That was me um, having it in slow mode. So this is their breakdown of it. Yes. There is a court photographer that's been sitting behind her side in trial. So and after you y'all, that's a different time. So this is a different, this is different nose action than the earlier nose action. There's two, there's a lot of nose action happening. But this is a different one. You see the flash. You see the flash happen on her face. It's wild. And then she, go, again, wipes her nose with her finger. If you're that snotty, why wipe your nose with your finger? So that is, that is her posing with the camera. So I don't think this is the same as the finger in the nose. I think these are two different incidents. So that's what I think. That's what I think. Two different no two different hand actions. That was a much longer interaction, but maybe it's the same one. Here, let's go back and look at the other one. Some of you guys are like these are the same. I don't think they're the same two. But let's go back and look at look at the other one cuz I think they are two different two different moments in court. So, cuz that's her looking over, looking down and then yeah, those are two different times in court than her pausing and um and posing for the camera. So those are two different nose tissue incidents in court, I think. I think they're two different incidents. I do. This is a different one. Cuz she's holding it. Yeah, two different incidents. That's what I think. Completely different times. But this one is her seeming to hold it up. And there are photos of her holding it up. I think she's posing in this one. I don't know what's going on in the other one. I don't think she's doing Coke on the stand. I've seen the rumors. I don't think she's doing Coke on the stand. I think there's been a lot of problems with her testimony, but I don't think that's one of them. So it's been wild to watch, but I don't think that's one of them. And with that, I am going to get to the PR statements and then I'm going to get to all your questions and we're just going to do a full Q and a. So Wow. Um, can you go forward a bit and see if she does tear up after sniffing? There isn't much left on that one video, CJ, but let me pull it back up and see. I would have to go find it in a longer context 
to see, but let's, we can pause, we can try it and we can pause it and I will make it as big as I can so we can take a look. Um, there we go. Let's take a look and see. Thank you for the question. Let's take a look. So this is the, the, the moment her. And also this is all like recording of a screen. It's not a screen cap. It's a recording of a screen to go and find this point in the testimony would take quite a lot of time to screen cap it, but it doesn't look like there's much of a change at this moment. So it doesn't look like it. Oh, I love that it auto populated my video after thanks YouTube. So it doesn't look like there's much of a change to her facial expression after that. Um, but there was one point where she did cry. So we will see. So we need to talk about these PR statements. Cause again, I've never seen anything quite like this coming out of a trial. And I'm going to keep saying that in this trial, I've never seen anything quite like this. It's been wild. I'm going to go to Twitter cause I shared them on Twitter and it's going to be easy for me to find them on Twitter. And, um, let's just go over there. If you don't follow me on there, you're welcome to, if you think Twitter is a dumpster fire, I completely understand you don't no obligation to come follow me on Twitter. So this is being shared from Chanley Painter from Court TV on May 5th. This was shared, shared at 9.40 p.m. Again, that's Central Standard Time. We're going to do Depp's PR statement first, and then we're going to do Hurd's PR statement second. So with that, as Depp's counsel correctly predicted in their opening statements last month, Ms. Hurd did indeed deliver, quote, the performance of her life in her direct examination. While Ms. Hurd's stories have continued to grow new and convenient details, Mr. Depp's recollections have remained exactly the same throughout these six painful years since her first allegations were made. His truth, the truth, is the same no matter the environment in which it is, um, in which it is, the truth, his truth, the truth is the same no matter the environment in which it is has been presented. Um, no, in which it is being presented or which it has been presented, but we've got too many words and that confuses my brain. <laughs> but I get what they're trying to say. But either the is or the has has to go. Something has to go in that sentence. The upcoming cross-examination from Mr. Depp's team will be most telling and will certainly highlight the many fallacies Ms. Heard has now attempted to pass off as fact throughout her convoluted testimony. I think convoluted is fair. I'm, I think that the reason they released this statement is because Heard's testimony came on a Thursday ahead of Friday being dark and then an entire week being dark. So I think the reason that they really wanted to bring this out is because they wanted to head it off um, because there is now a week of the internet talking about this and the headlines were already coming out that Amber Heard has a dramatic and emotional retelling of horrific abuse from Johnny Depp. So I think this is their PR team's, um, it's again, spokesperson for Johnny Depp. I think this is their PR team's attempt to head off or at least remind everyone that, Hey, there's still more to this. There's still cross-examination. We're not, we're not done yet. So, um, other than the grammatical error between the is has, it is a pretty, I mean, I don't know. It mirrors their opening statement. It feels like a professional statement to me that, you know, this is what we said in opening. Remember, Cross is still coming. Asking, it seems to ask the internet, maybe the media, to keep an open mind. We're not done yet. Um, what we said is this was a performance. And what we're seeing is this is a performance. So this, again, came from Chanley Painter. Um, oh, I retweeted it at 9.40 p.m. This came out at 5.40 p.m. She tweeted it from Fairfax, Virginia. But um, I think this would be in central time because that's when I see it, if that's how Twitter works. Don't quote me on time zones. It could be off by an hour. So the next tweet was from Herd's team. Again, this was released to Chanley Painter over at Court TV. Um, Amber Heard's response to Johnny Depp's statement, and she tweeted this at 7.33 p.m. from Fairfax, Virginia, where she's been covering this case. Y'all, Amber Heard's response to Depp's statement from Court TV. This is the statement. Y'all, y'all, why? I mean, maybe the other statement needed editing marks too to get the is has thing out of there, but why are the editing statements still in the screenshot that they shared with Court TV? Why? 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 
why? Let's go through this statement. I have, uh, I have thoughts. And also spokesperson for Amber Heard, quote, as evidenced by the statement just released, Mr. Depp's defamation claim is falling apart so rapidly that his counsel are turning from prosecutor to persecutor. Full stop. They're not prosecutors. This is not a criminal case. They are not prosecutors. They are plaintiff's lawyers. How? Is this the new PR team? Did the new PR team not ask? Does the new PR team not work with court cases much? Does the new does the new PR team not understand how law works? Like ask the lawyers, but trying to get this moment of they're turning from prosecutor to persecutor doesn't work because they're plaintiff's counsel. They're not prosecutors at all. So already I have questions about um, your competence. Truth, truth. That's the truth. That's my feelings. That's my thoughts. That's my opinion. It, if you don't know that they're not a prosecutor, says the formal prosecutor, how do you know anything? I just, what? They're, they are turning from plaintiff's counsel to persecutor. They are acting as persecutors. There's a lot of options to save this sentence, but prosecutor to persecutor is not it. They are not prosecutors. It just makes it seem like you don't know law things. They boast that Mr. Depp's story has not changed. They did do that. That's accurate. Accurate. If so, since he lost the domestic violence restraining order, I'm going to finish this sentence. I'm going to go back and we're going to, we're going to talk line by line. If so, since he lost the domestic violence restraining order and he resoundingly lost the libel case in the UK, perhaps he should consider a new strategy rather than the recycled approach of attacking the victim and refusing to take responsibility for his own conduct. Conduct. Okay. He did not lose a domestic violence restraining order, to be clear. A temporary domestic violence restraining order was granted against him but it was ex party. Ex party means that uh, his side wasn't there to defend their side. And while that's appropriate, because sometimes you don't, you need, you need the situation to stop immediately. So temporary restraining orders are granted on a different basis. They are generally, well, in the jurisdiction this was in, are granted for 21 days. And then the other side has an opportunity to be heard. We heard his divorce attorney, Laura Wasser, testify in court with derision for Elaine about the ex party TRO. And she said, we were given no notice, no opportunity to respond. And they went into court ex party without the other side and were granted an ex party restraining order. We want courts to be able to grant ex party restraining orders. This isn't a bad thing. If somebody is trying to get out of a dangerous and abusive environment, we need them to sometimes that 21 day period gives them the time and space to get somewhere safe and to get out. I am not faulting the system of ex party temporary restraining orders. What I am faulting is characterizing an ex party temporary restraining order as a loss because he did not defend it. He was not in court, so it was not lost. It was granted against him. That's that's my my pickiness is with saying, well, we won, you lost. No, he didn't show up. It was ex party and it was granted ex party. So the ex party, and again, the ex party temporary restraining order in the context of a divorce proceeding is different. And it was dropped because they um, they negotiated it in the divorce settlement that they then very quickly resolved, which we heard from Laura Wasser. So Mel B ex party is the second one with a generally a dash. Um, so he lost the domestic violence restraining order. False. He resoundingly lost the libel case in the UK. He did lose the libel case in the UK, but Amber Heard was not the opposing party. The UK son was. And again, I have questions because of the judge. Perhaps he should consider a new strategy rather than the recycled approach of attacking the victim. I understand that they are trying to get public sympathy on their side by saying that he's attacking the victim. I understand that. That is a PR move. That is a choice. And refusing to take responsibility for his own conduct, Again, I want to know, chat, what you think. Um, do you think Johnny Depp took responsibility for his conduct in his testimony? I thought he testified that he's a flawed person, that he has made horrible tweets, that he has said things that he is ashamed and embarrassed of, that he has acted in ways that he is ashamed and embarrassed of, that he has said things that were mean. Um, 
I think he said a lot of things in his testimony that weren't just downplaying his own role in this. I think he took a lot of responsibility in his testimony. So I think trying to gaslight the public and saying he refused to take responsibility for his conduct is a challenge for me. Um, he went pretty deep into his own addiction, his own behavior, his own substance use, his difficult childhood. I mean, he, I felt that his testimony was in those regards, very, very truthful. So, um, then we get into, if Mr. Depp was truly innocent, I need some coffee. If Mr. Depp was truly innocent, why has he repeatedly apologized? Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's not say that because you apologize, it means you are guilty. Because in cycle of violence and IPV relationships and other circumstances, people will routinely re apologize to make shit stop, even if they didn't do anything. So saying that he apologized points to his guilt is just, we're not, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Him apologizing for their verbal fights is not is not indicative of his guilt of being an abuser in the way that she said that he was abusive. Yes, he apologized. All of those apologies seem to have come from, I'm, I'm apologizing that we had this fight. I'm apologizing that we had this horrible moment. And some of them seem to be placating her in the audio that we've now all heard in court. So, just saying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Can we just, is not the same as saying, I'm sorry because I did something. In fact, in fact, the only person I've heard on any of this audio admitting to physically harming the other one and apologizing for physically harming the other one is Amber Heard on the audio that's in court. Not talking about the audio that's not in court in the general sphere of the interwebs, but the audio that's in court, the only one apologizing for making things physical is Amber Heard. So if this logic concludes, then isn't Amber Heard not innocent based on your own statement? Because why is she apologizing? She apologizes in a lot of the audio. That is evidence in this trial. On the recordings, and I'm inclined to believe the recordings over what anyone says in court. I'm going to go to those first. <sighs> so if Depp was truly innocent, why has he repeatedly apologized to Miss Heard? Well, there's a lot of reasons. And what we're not going to do is that. What we're not going to do is that. Um, repeatedly apologized and promised to put the monster away for good. Again, this, I think, for me, mischaracterizes what we heard in court from his depiction of the monster and even so far her depiction of the monster regarding addiction and substance use, not violence. I think it's disingenuous as fuck. I really do. I really do. I just, uh, I left my lip gloss in my purse in the other room. Now I don't even have soothing lip gloss. I have to go with lipstick. I wanted, needed a, my face rollers in the other room. There is nothing. There is nothing. <laughs> So I don't think, again, I think this is disingenuous. If he's truly innocent, why does he apologize? See, they're trying to say, see, and the monster is, they're trying to make fetch happen with this. And I hate it. They then say one of Miss Heard's disappointments is Mr. Depp's inability to distinguish fact from fiction. What are you saying now? Who's what now? Who's, who's inability to distinguish what from what? Depp's inability to distinguish fact from fiction. If, just just cl clip it now, if Ben Chu or Camille Vasquez use that line in their closing, it is going to be the center square on a bingo card for me somewhere because the inability to distinguish fact from fiction seems like it can be uno reversed to talk about Amber Heard's testimony because um, A, that would be amazing, and B, I think they could use her PR statements against her in court, which would be petty in a way that I would kind of be there for. So I would love to see them use um, inability to distinguish fact from fiction because they're going to circle that right back around to Amber Heard's testimony, I think. They then go on to say, 
that this inability to distinguish fact from fiction is a malady that appears or which appears to have spread to his legal team. What? 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 So now they're coming for Ben Chu himself. They're coming for the lawyers. And I think the lawyers are going to be able to turn this back around on them and Uno reverse it. I'm petty like that. I absolutely would do that. I absolutely would say the only abuser in this court is Amber Heard based on her own statements. She has had an inability to distinguish fact from fiction when it comes to every incident with Johnny Depp. But what she told you truly was that she stood at the top of those stairs and she landed a punch. She landed it right on his face, just like she landed a vodka bottle in Australia, just like she's trying to land the performance of her life in this court in front of all of you. But ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is your responsibility to distinguish fact from fiction in this case. And the evidence that we have on our side is lists all of the witnesses. But what have they provided you? A handful of pictures with no metadata that are blurry. Thank you. That's how I see this Uno reversing on her, but that's okay. But that's okay. Inability to distinguish fact from fiction, a malady that is, which appears to have spread to the legal team. You come for the legal team, the legal team will come from you. Don't rile the fucking lawyers. (laughs) That same team is so panicked. Panicked, they say. That same team is so panicked. They are fighting tooth and nail. Oh, I love that you guys are like, yay. Um, I like writing closing arguments in my head. I'm going to have to work on one for this. I might have to work on what I would do for closing arguments for both sides and, and do those in part of our members only that's, that was spontaneous. Those are, those are contemporaneous closing arguments. But if I think about them, I think they're, they could be better. I love closing arguments. They're my favorite. Okay. Um, can I, I'll tell you all a story about how I was, uh, not chosen for the mock trial team in law school and the residual glee that it gave me when I got hired at the DA's office over some of the individuals who did not choose me for the mock trial team in law school. But that is a question for another day because, again, law school is very much like high school. It boils down to a popularity contest. Um, and I was a loud nerd, so popular, not it. Let's see. Um, riled the lawyers. They riled the lawyers, and then they called them panicky. Does Ben Chu seem panicky to you? That same team is so panicked that they are fighting tooth and nail to prevent compelling evidence and photos from being introduced. Okay, look. Okay, look. Okay, look. I have so many thoughts. I have so many thoughts. They are trying to seed into the public that... Depp's team is panicked and they are fighting to prevent compelling evidence and photos from being introduced. It is my belief that they are seeding a loss in this, that they are seeding the, well, if we lose, it's because his team fought tooth and nail to prevent compelling evidence from coming in. They are setting up a trail of blame. However, we've all seen the motion for sanctions that says that Amber Heard's team hasn't turned over the evidence that the court ordered her to turn over at the end of November 2021. So if the evidence is not coming in because of the, I don't know, rules of fucking evidence, It's because your team has either not laid the foundation, has not gotten around the hearsay objections and called the proper witnesses, or hasn't turned over the evidence that the court ordered you to turn over. It is no one's fault but yourself. To quote my friend Scott White as Gunnar Stahl in The Mighty Ducks, you lost it for yourself. Fighting tooth and nail to prevent compelling evidence because they're panicked. They want the evidence in. They've allowed those pictures in. I don't think they had to, but they've allowed them in because the pictures are so bad that they can argue it. I'm not done yet. We're still not done yet. Small wonder. Don't disparage the robot television show that we all loved as children. I'm teasing. It's just the first thing that came to mind. Small wonder Mr. Depp does not have the fortitude or courage to even look at Miss Heard through all or all at, we're going to start over. Mr. Depp does not have, this sentence makes me so mad that I can't even read the entire thing. Miss Small Wonder 
Again, don't disparage the robots. Small wonder Mr. Depp does not have the fortitude or courage to even look at Miss Heard at all throughout the proceedings as he could not in the UK trial and instead he doodles and snickers. Okay, look. Okay, look. Okay, look. First of all, let's not lean into stereotypes of calling a man a coward for not looking at her on the stand. Second of all, let's not um, let's not pretend that that's because he doesn't have fortitude or courage. We're going to play the clip of what happened when Johnny Depp and Amber Heard passed each other in court after we finish with this, because if Johnny Depp was sitting there looking at her on the stand, do you know what her legal team would say in closing? You saw it now. He's intimidating her. He's terrifying her. And I have sat in plenty of trials where I, not just the ones I've been doing, but trials that my friends have been doing as well, watching a defendant sit at counsel table, stare down the person that's talking about what was done to them. I had a stabbing trial. Uh, It was an attempted murder. The defendant represented himself. And the entire time that the victim was on the stand testifying about what happened to him as he was cornered and attempted to be robbed in a men's restroom while he was using a urinal. And this person came up behind him and stabbed him multiple times in the side and in the back um, as he was turning around and trying to fight him off while using a urinal. I mean, talk about being vulnerable, but the entire testimony of this defendant sat there and stared him down while he was testifying. And the jury noticed because they commented on it after trial. And it, that kind of behavior in court is something that a jury looks at. And then when that defendant who was representing himself looked at the victim on the stand and said, why are you saying it was me that stabbed you? And he's like, because I saw you when you were stabbing me. And the testimony ended up being very powerful because this was not a known person to known person crime. This was a a kind of random stranger crime. So there wasn't this built-in fear of that individual. That individual's in handcuffs. The bailiffs are taking him out. I'm not afraid of you. So I'm going to look at you and say, this is what you did to me. That's not true when parties know each other. And that's not always true in stranger cases either, where people are suffering from trauma. They can't look at the person staring them down in court. There are times when you ask a victim or a witness to identify an individual and they look over at that side of the table and completely lose their inability to speak and the court has to take a break so that they can compose themselves and come back. So for this statement to say that him not looking at her somehow proves that he is guilty is so far off the the just plain of reality for how these cases play out that it is absolutely pissed me right the fuck off. That is not how this works. And it doesn't show a lack of fortitude or courage. It can show fear, but it can also show knowledge of the perception that if he's staring her down on the stand, her team is going to flip that on him and say, he's trying to intimidate her. Who's trying to intimidate who in court? Who's staring at who? Who's staring at who in court? Who's trying to intimidate who? You tell me who you think is trying to intimidate the other party in court. But he knows, and his legal team knows, if he stares her down, A, it's giving her the attention that she wants, perhaps, but B, it can be used against him. Um, and he has he has said, the jury doesn't know this, but he has said he will never look at her again. And that is very consistent with someone who's been through trauma, from my experience very consistent. So to try to make it seem like Depp is less of a man or a coward, not only plays into harmful stereotypes, but also is just fucking gross. Instead, he doodles and snickers. He did snicker. He has, he has done that and he has doodled. We're almost done and I'm still angry. Mr. Depp's behavior in this trial has been as pitiful as it was in their marriage. What? What? Now, now he's a coward who lacks fortitude, and he is also pitiful. I thought that he was a violent, obsessive monster, but you're telling me in your PR statement that he is a coward who lacks fortitude that was pitiful in their marriage and is pitiful now. Which is it? Which is it? Is he a terrifying, obsessive monster? Or is he pitiful and lacking courage and fortitude? Is he meek and worthy of mockery? Because this PR statement is so preposterous. And if he was that pitiful, why get married? We've heard all of the testimony from before the marriage. 
I, which is it? Pitiful, lacking courage and fortitude or heinous monster? I have questions. And you can't have it both ways in the court of public opinion. They then go to their last, thankfully last sentence. Apparently, they feel they must double down on their demonstrably losing two-part strategy, distract the jury, and demonize the victim. Who's doing what now? Who's doing what now? Who's doing what literally in this PR statement? Who's doing what now? And who's trying to distract the jury? Because what I saw from Johnny Depp was embarrassment and shame and looking at his attorney and occasionally looking at the jury, trying to explain like where his hand was and things like that. What I saw from Amber Heard was someone glaring at the jury, glaring at the jury during her testimony where she was talking about how she was injured, but her face was Who's trying to distract the jury? Who? And while you're answering it, chat, please let me also know who let the dogs out because I, I still have questions about that. So I think this PR statement is an absolute unadulterated disaster. Um, I think that if you're trying to make Johnny Depp out to be the monster that you keep calling him in court, calling him pitiful and, um, you know, lacking courage is... Uh, is maybe not the strategy because it's internally inconsistent with your theory of the case. Or is it? Who wrote this statement? Why was it released to court TV with editing lines in it? How is this real? How is this a real professional PR statement? How is this real? How is this real? And who wrote it? And is this just, is this just evidencing a complete lack of client control? Is this Amber Heard saying, this is what you're doing? Because this reeks to me of a client that wants this information out there. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday on, um, on Richard Hoag's channel on Hoag Law with Natalie Lawyer Chick and Rob and others. Natalie was talking about um, people seeking to embarrass others. And this PR statement reads again like further attempts to embarrass Johnny Depp. They played the completely gratuitous vomiting audio that had no time and no information. Um, it was just noises of someone vomiting in court. And I was like, why are we doing this if not to just embarrass somebody? Um, what is this PR statement if not seeking to embarrass Johnny Depp? Like, what is it anyway? And speaking of the pathetic, wait, no pitiful, lacking fortitude, and lacking courage individual that has been named in this, what we need to look at is Amber Heard um, getting off the stand. And we mentioned this when I was live, but we're going to take a look at it again altogether now that we are not live and contemporaneous and we can parse it down. And then we're going to go to questions. Hello, Scotland. Let's take a look at this real quick. Um, I don't know if the audio is any help because it's just as court's ending. And this is her getting off the stand. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, but she's looking down. This is the bailiff in charge of getting her across the well back to where her attorneys are sitting on this side. Johnny Depp's team is right here because the party that bears the burden of proof sits closest to the jury. But also in the U.S. system, you have the right to confront your accuser. You have the right to see the person saying these things about you. So the person who is, you know, the one bearing the burden gets to sit there and, and look at the witness stand. So normally the witness stand is also closest to the jury. So she clocks that Depp is coming out with his team and you can see her react. This black pole back here is the court TV camera. And she backs up and the bailiffs are like, Mr. Depp, can you, can you not? And he's like, whatevs and shrugs his shoulder and kind of laughs at his team and security. And then they escort her across the well. Now, all of this looked to me to be a bit performative. Like she's backing up. Uh, the jury is not in the courtroom when this is happening. Depp has come around from counsel table this way into the well. Um, I don't know if they lock eyes at all in this. I'm just going to slow it down and play it as I'm talking about what I think, but this is not in front of the jury. And we, I watched Chanley Painter talk about this moment in court. Again, she's the reporter for court TV. 
Um, I don't know when Amber clocks Depp. It's probably right there. And then reacts very largely after his testimony, which again is interesting. I don't see him looking at her. She's, he looks that direction and she's looking up towards the court TV cameras. But what Chanley Painter said in her report of this is that, um, Heard walks out and is visibly shaking in court and then breaks into sobs when she gets outside of the courtroom. And that's what was observed by those in court. And again, the jury is not in the room, but the reporters and the cameras still are. So I don't know if she was genuinely afraid of debt. But what I will say is in a case like this, with allegations like this, the bailiffs should have made sure that he was still at his table until she left court. That is up to the bailiffs to do. So they should have made sure she got off the witness stand before he got up and started moving. So that's, that's my thoughts on it. But it was very odd that she is backing up as fast as she can, but then the PR statement is that he's a coward and he's pitiful. It's a very interesting contradiction coming out from her side. It's just, it's just very interesting to me. So with that, it is time to get to questions. I've got questions. You've got questions. I've seen your super chats come again. We're going to do our best to get through all of them. The mods are like, so we just stream for like three hours now. Yes. So let's get to all of your questions. I'm going to try to do super chats, but not just super chats. Um, but yes, in that moment, I think the bailiffs should have made sure that the witness got off the stand before Johnny Depp um, approached. They should have made sure that that moment didn't happen. Um, and she might have been nervous. She's been on the stand saying horrific things about him. She might have been nervous because she believes he's abusive. She might be nervous because he is abusive. She might be nervous because she's lying about the things on the stand. There's a lot of reasons that reaction could have been genuine with her, you know, saying, oh shit, what I don't want to do is have to look him in the face. And we've heard audio of some of these things from her where she's apologized and said that she wasn't the one who wanted all of this, that the lawyers made her do this. Are the lawyers still making you do this? That is my question. So let us get to some of your questions. Um, Sarah D, thank you so much. A huge thank you to our moderators. It's a lot. Um, it looks like we've got like 37,000 people in the chat across platforms. So go ahead and like, and subscribe and do the YouTube things. Follow me on the platforms. We're going to keep talking about this case. The court TV reporter is sat next to Amber's PR guy. I saw that for the last couple of days. I thought that I noted that as well. It is noted. Do you think Amber was drinking and using Coke on the stand? No. I don't. I think she was probably drinking something that was hydrating so that her voice wouldn't get tired. Um, and we broke down that video. Uh, could she have been using something to try to make her eyes water? Perhaps could she have been picking up booger? Perhaps could she have been trying to not um, be snotty? Perhaps. But I didn't see any. Normally when people um, absolutely unhinge like that, you don't or you see um, with the sobbing, the snot, and she did not look snotty at all. So that was an interesting moment for me as well. So um, it, Island Gal was saying it was a PR stunt probably. The chat just jumped on me as I was trying to grab that. So it was interesting. Um, crazy how people, crazy how many people this case brings into everyone's live chats. I think she did an nail some menthol. She might have. This case is definitely something that has gripped all of us um, for sure. So let's see. Can you talk about Amber not turning over everything she was supposed to? I have a video on the channel about that that I will link. I went through the entire motion for sanctions. The motion for sanctions pointed out in depth, and it would take me an hour to go over, but the motion for sanctions pointed out in depth the digital evidence that the court ordered her to turn over that she was not um, and did not turn over. So that is part of um, that is part of it. But I have an entire video breaking down that motion for sanctions. The court said, turn this over. They haven't done it. I think what will happen is that they will get it in a limiting jury instruction. The jury instruction, when there are discovery violations, is normally fairly strong, saying this side did not um, turn over evidence that is detrimental to the other side. But we will see when we get to the jury instructions either before or after closing arguments. I always preferred the judge to read the jury instructions before and then do closing, but some judge have some judges have the attorneys do their closing and they read the jury instructions afterwards. On the 27th, we'll be looking for what happens there. So 
I'm going to get to a few more questions. And then we're also going to start um, doing super chats. I saw a question about the H3 cases. Um, we need an H3 update soon. Apparently they won the second case. The case that was just formalized was the one where Ryan Kavanaugh was trying to take down the does Ryan Kavanaugh look like Harvey Weinstein.com website that had been lost at the big, that had been lost a while back um, that we knew it wasn't going to go anywhere, but it was formally like yeeted in writing. And I can pull that up in quick bits or weekly roundup on Friday. I have the ruling. I just haven't pulled it up. So that's what it has to deal with. It has to deal with the does Harvey Weinstein or does Ryan Kavanaugh look like Harvey Weinstein website. So that is it. Question. Franco's been deposed. Could that be played even if he doesn't take the stand? Uh, yes, it could if the doors open for his type of testimony. So that that could happen if it if the doors open for his testimony. Question, did you read the Amber Heard appropriating her assistant sexual abuse? I've seen uh, those allegations made. It's not before the jury. So I didn't, and I didn't want to break it down here. Other channels have broken that down. But yes, I have seen um, that that's been alleged. The jury will never know that. So question, how does Krista, um, no, Christina, sorry. This is the chat again. It's moving very fast. So sometimes it's hard for me to catch up. How does spousal privilege impact any of this or does it not? Thanks. You are welcome. That's a fantastic question. I would love to tell you. Have I been binge watching Elise Myers on TikTok? Yes. <laughs> That's a great question. I would love to tell you. I love her content so much. It just, oh, I love her content. It makes me happy. I watch nerdy shit on TikTok. I love it. Spousal privilege doesn't apply because the spouses are opposing parties to each other. So Neither spouse can assert the spousal privilege to make the other one not talk because, again, they are opposing one another. So they have to be able to share their side. So that's the kind of briefest, most general explanation of why spousal privilege does not apply here. So Rita, thank you. The hair got the hair got galaxied, which is starting to fade a little bit because galaxy is hard to hold on to. And I maybe don't always use cold water to wash my hair. The galaxy is starting to fade a little bit. We did it at 200,000, which feels like it was just a few weeks ago. And now we're at like 318 or something. Um, I'm sure it's different than that, but the counter says 318 here. I haven't looked at the front end of the channel. We've got to do something, but it'll happen after this trial and after this, um, after this, after my vacation, after this trial and after my vacation. So question, have you seen accusations that Heard was doing coke on the stand? Yes, I talked about that at the very top of, well, not the top of the stream. It'll be time stamped. So I talked about it early on in the stream. You guys are giving me the updates, 323, 322, 321. We don't know what it is. We're somewhere in the 320s. Fantastic. Well, we'll get a big bing and it'll bing over to, sometimes it bings and it says like three or 4,000. It's blown me away. The support of me and LawTube and this channel is just um, is just absolutely mind boggling. And I appreciate it so much. Question. Do you think she is acting this all out? I love crime shows. Stupid. I know that they are not real court at all. I mean, if a lot of the crime shows collaborate with attorneys, prosecutors, and, um, and others. So I honestly feel like I'm watching a trial scene on law and order SVU. I do too. I, I think law and order SVU should make a a version of this um when it's all over and i feel like um i'm i volunteer as tribute to help consult on that show and talk about everything they've gotten right and everything they've gotten wrong i would love to talk about that for sure so um let's see i i was trying to pull this and it kept bumping taylor thank you and you guys thank you for marking question before these question i have a ba in criminal justice um and have yet to use it. Law tube is making me want to do law, but I don't have the confidence to be a lawyer. A lot of lawyers don't have the confidence to be a lawyer. And going to law school doesn't mean you have to practice in the traditional sense. There are lots of ways to use a law degree. Some people go to law school and become authors. People become consultants. People work in other fields. There is no one type of lawyer. And if you look across law tube, you will see lawyers that practice in all different ways in all different areas. Um, not all lawyers are super outgoing and want to talk to people. There are research attorneys that really do the behind the scenes work with judges and really don't go into court in that way at all. Um, I will be perfectly honest with you, Taylor. I was very nervous about going to law school. I'm ADHD and dyslexic. I did not always have great grades. And there was a lot of, who do you think you are trying to go to law school? You're not smart enough or good enough to do that. Um, but I wanted to do it. And Dr. B was like, um, so you're not going to know if you don't like try to do things. So maybe we just try to do things we're not good at and see how it goes. 
And I appreciate that. It's like, you know, sometimes you have to try something new. And and if you are interested in it, absolutely give it a try. Do not do not feel like you have to be a lawyer in one certain way. There are so, so many ways to do this profession and so many ways to do uh, law and to engage with law. So do not do not feel that you can't. There is a way to study law if you want to. Cassandra said, um, I don't understand what it means when counsel says it's not offered for the truth because the witness is sworn in and they are under oath. Anyway, Cassandra, this is a great question. This goes to hearsay. With regard to hearsay, you guys, I am going to start. I am bringing the books out onto the desk as we get into this. We're just going to the books from now on. I updated my FREs for y'all so we can talk more in depth about hearsay because we've got to rewrite some of this for the law nerd dictionary that has been underway with yeeting and not deleting your shit. We're going to have to come up with some law nerd dictionary for hearsay. Hearsay, back up. The foundation of the U.S. justice system, or one of the foundations of the U.S. justice system, is the um, notion and guarantee that you have the right to confront the person accusing you. This is different than other systems that our system said, fuck no, we don't want to do it that way. Um, Emily, on the foundations of U.S. law, fuck no, we don't want to do it that way. You get to see the person accusing you of something. If somebody says you stole shit from them, you get to see the person saying you stole my shit. You get to confront your accuser if you are being accused. Hearsay would get around that because it would be me saying, oh my God. So my friend Natalie said that like you totally stole her shit. And if I'm offering that statement to prove that whatever my friend Natalie said that that person stole their shit, they're not confronting their accuser. They're confronting me who heard it from a third party. So that becomes hearsay because it's a statement offered to prove the matter or for the truth of the matter asserted. But there are hearsay exceptions, lots of them. It needs, a, it needs an entire video. There are lots of hearsay exceptions. One of them is the statement is not offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Generally, you would follow up with what it is in fact offered for. I'm not offering, oh my God, she told me you stole her shit to prove that you stole her shit. I'm offering it to prove that I was on the phone with her at this time as it was happening. And this was a present sense impression. And she's on the phone with me going, oh my God, this is happening. Somebody just grabbed my purse and they're running down the street and trying to steal my shit and blah, 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 blah. And I can testify about her tone and, and what she said, but she also needs to testify about what happened. Um, except in limited circumstances. And I'm, I'm not going to wander fall field down further the rabbit hole of hearsay. But when they're saying it's not offered for the truth, they're trying to say, your honor, it's not hearsay. The objection to hearsay should not be sustained. The statement should be allowed to come in because it's offered for another purpose other than to prove the truth. But then it also has to be relevant. It can't be more prejudicial than probative. And it has to fit into a hearsay exception of which there are many. Thank you, Chris. Sarah said, did you hear about Amber's PR guy? He's deleted all socials because women are coming forward about him. I did not, I did not hear that. Oh my. So maybe the PR statement is not the biggest thing they have to deal with. I haven't seen that. I will look at it out of my own curiosity, but oh boy. Question, what's the most important thing for Johnny Depp's team to cover on Amber Heard's cross? First time catching you live here in the UK. Thanks so much for your work. Lovely, Ruthie, you are welcome. I think the most important thing for them to hammer are inconsistencies in her testimony and the donations that she said she gave and didn't. And the headline, I think for them still the headline, and let me pull it up real quick. Um, I think the headline of the online version is still their most powerful uh, claim for defamation. I think it is more powerful. Um, I think it is more powerful than the statements that she was a victim of domestic abuse. I think the headline, and let me pull this up real quick. I think the headlines are most powerful argument for defamation. And it is defamation per se, because it's talking about uh, sexual violence. That is a crime that's, yes, abuse is also a crime, but it's more vague. So this can be defamation per se. So even if they're like, oh, well, we don't know why he lost Pirates of the Caribbean. We don't know what the, what the cause of any of that was. They don't have to find damage if they find that it's defamation per se, like just saying the thing means it's defamatory no matter what. And so this headline, they are going to argue Amber Heard did not write the headline, but Depp's team is arguing that she incorporated it and, and 
attributed it to herself when she shared it out on Twitter saying, I'm very proud of what I wrote is essentially what the tweet said. So she's taking ownership of this headline. And so they need to hammer on this statement about sexual violence because when she says I became a public figure recommending or representing domestic abuse, I think that's more vague. And the jury could be like, I mean, yes, abuse is very broad and this goes back and forth, but I think it's harder for them to argue this. And so pointing out the inconsistencies there and pointing out um, her inconsistencies with telling that she had not that or telling that she had donated these things also shows that there might have been a financial motive or they can at least argue there might have been a financial motive behind her making the initial statements anyway to force a divorce settlement so that going all the way back to 2016, all of these allegations have been for gain, which is something the judge in the court in the UK found very persuasive that she made these donations. This was before they had all the evidence from the ACLU and the Children's Hospital LA saying she didn't make these donations and her statements that she had were false. So if they can prove she lied there, what's to prove she didn't lie here? And if she lied here, then you can find these statements were made with malice based on her testimony. So I think proving the proving the parts the parts where she lied is going to be the most important. Have you heard that Amber might have killed her high school best friend in a car accident while driving drunk? I did not hear that. That would be absolutely tragic um, if she did. And no, I have not heard that. If she did while she was in high school and was a minor, that probably won't come up because juvenile records are protected. Why did Amber's legal team let her go on with that wild abuse story? Um, I don't think they had much choice. I think Amber was going to tell what she wanted to tell and that this was what she was going to tell. And I don't know how much control her legal team has over what she says, as evidenced by her bringing up um, Kate Moss, which seemed to be something she didn't need to bring up at all. But that's part of civil law. Your client is your client and you get to you get to help give the legal strategy. But at the end of the day, if the client's like, we're playing the vomiting audio, I want it played unless it's completely unethical or the court stops you. There's not, I mean, there's no reason not to do what your client is asking you to do. Question. Can we please have an, it binged move your head 321. Congrats. It's been so great watching you thrive. Thank you. Um, when this clicks over, I don't know why it hasn't binged, but when this bings, I will do a bing. And if not, we'll celebrate it at the end of the stream. Question. I sent you a gift for your birthday. Just want to make sure you received it. If not, um, I need to track Marilyn. I have not been to pick up packages. Dr. B's doing that today. And I will share on social media when I get those, I still need to share some more of our exploring the generous amounts of candy from the UK. We got the kids have been enjoying that. Um, uh, Bali said, hi, Emily. What do you think of Camille Vasquez? We'll be doing this week. Mock cross with colleagues. No, I think she'll be resting and prepping. Um, what form will they take? I don't know if they'll need to do mock cross. I think she's a seasoned enough attorney to start listing out the things that she wants to get. And it would start with the, what are the highlights we need to hit? What are the other things we would like to hit and tabbing all the inconsistencies. So it's ready to go and looking at what evidence they're going to be bringing in and resting. Resting is very important this week. Um, thank you, Helena. Seen law and lumber debunk the broken bed made E news. Get it law and lumber. I mean, all of us being like, Rob, do a YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet to Law & Lumber, I'm hearing someone come in. Is that Dr. B? You can come in and say, hi, we're live. There's, what do you mean you're leaving? All right. You're not camera. You're always camera ready. You can say hi. Um, we're just finishing up coffee and Chrissy words. Thank you. No, we're good. We're just doing Q&A. Thanks, hon. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see that he made e-news. I love that that's happening. The law tube sphere has been very much um, forcing, kindly peer pressuring Rob to make this video. So Rob over on Law and Lumber, wait, this is the second one. Um, this is the second video. There is a first video on his channel. And we talked about this last night. This is his first video at 289,000 views. Rob's going to be like, YouTube is great. You just, you put up a video and it smashes. So we'll absolutely link that down below and save it. But he is a woodworking attorney that has joined LawTube through this trial. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to have him in LawTube. His insight has been fantastic. And he goes through and shows why the wood wouldn't do what Amber Heard is saying the wood is wooding. I don't want to, um, I don't want to give you the ending of that because I want you to go watch this video, give it a like, give his channel a subscribe and support the woodworking lawyer. Look, 
I had a great case where a defense attorney was trying to tell a police officer that they didn't know what they were talking about because of this. And the attorney's like, well, how do you know that? And the the police officer was like, well, actually, you know, my father's a woodworker. I grew up woodworking. I've made tables. I've made this. I've made this. And the officer went into this litany of personal experience in their private life, completely outside from them being an officer. And the defense attorney was like, like, I was not expecting you to have that level of experience with tables and wood and woodworking and the way things break. And it's great to see um, not only attorneys have hobbies outside of law, but also bring that ex- expertise in a way that it addresses something in court. Because I think all of us heard this story about how the bed was broken and then saw this like splintered off piece of wood and we're like, seriously, what? So I will absolutely go ahead and share that in the description below. Go show Law & Lumber some love. Um, welcome, Chris. Let's see. It's 2.09 a.m. Malaysia. Have fun. Thank you for the support. And thank you for the super stickers. My first time watching you live and I love it. Well, welcome, Alex. Um, Be here for trial covered, covered starting on the 16th. Can I tell you how tickled I am that trial day 16th starts on May 16th? Emily, are you in her? Yes, I'm tickled by that. I'm tickled that the whole week we're going to get trial day 16th on the 16th, trial day 17th on the 17th. It's going to be so easy to keep track of up until the 19th, and then it's going to get all messed up again. Um, Laura said, thank you for your streams. I'm applying to top law schools next cycle. LSAT good, GPA just below median. Any advice on what I can do in the meantime to boost chances? I have no idea what the process of applying to law school is like. I guarantee you there have got to be YouTube channels talking about this and what you can do to boost it. I say, um, you need to show law schools that you are a well-rounded human and Tell them what your interests are and why you want to be a lawyer and help them see your passion for for the good you want to do in the world with your law degree. Because I think law schools look for well-rounded people and people who who do something outside of school. And I think that's probably important, but I'm sure there are, I don't keep up with admissions at all. And I'm sure admissions um, and the admissions process have changed since I went to law school like a million years ago. So I would look on YouTube. I would not stress about it too much. And remember, a law degree is what you make of it. The school itself, unless you really want to clerk for the Supreme Court, oftentimes the school itself is not the deciding factor. Um, You can have a staggeringly wonderful career. That is what you make of it. Um, Not going to a top, top tier law school, but that's not to say that that's not where you belong. So best of luck. And YouTube probably has more resources on that. I heard people say that this could be a precedent setting case now. What exactly does that mean for a case to set a precedent? Also, what's your favorite Pirates movie? Mine is the second. It's a masterclass of storytelling morning from AZ. I have never thought about what my favorite Pirates movie is. I will have to evaluate that. We always watch them before we go on cruises. We love Pirates of the Caribbean over at this house. Um, But I haven't thought about what my Pirates movie is. It's probably in the first first handful um, because the later ones, some of the storytelling gets a little bit odd. But what does precedent setting mean? It means that the law that's created from the case can impact other cases that come behind it. But cases need to go up to the appellate court and sometimes up to the Supreme Court of the state or federally to set a precedent that is then the law of the land and somehow change the law of the land. I don't think we're going to see changes in the law of the land like the U.S. in general based on this case, but we have seen some changes to Virginia's anti-slap statutes because of this case. So in some ways, it's already changed uh, the precedent in Virginia, but I don't think it is a precedent-setting case. It is not, though the celebrity and the spectacle of it is unique, the facts are not that unique that we have um, I mean, a defamation case playing out with celebrities is always unique, but spouses um, arguing in court is not all that unique. So I don't think this is a precedent setting case. I think it can make some changes in Virginia. Ren said, I miss your face. Thank you. It's because I'm not streaming every single day. Coffee and cursing for the win. Hello from Seattle. Hello. It's your birthday today. Dragon tears for me. Happy birthday. Um, You are close to a birthday buddy. Hello, all my May birthday buddies. Just because you're the best. Thank you. Um, hello, new, hello, Nikki, new here from Louisiana. I'm so glad I found you. Do we know if Amber Heard made any of the essay claims, um, in her 2016 deposition? I have seen, I have not read those depositions and gone through them extensively because I want to see what the jury sees, but none of them were made in the UK case because I read through all the claims made in the UK case and that would have stuck out in my mind. Um, they were not made in the UK case. I don't know if they were made in the deposition, but they were not made in the UK case. And that is going to come up. So thank you, Barbara, for the super sticker. 
Um, Carla, completely unrelated, just wanted to say hi and ask if you still play Pokemon Go, sent you a friend request. Um, I will go back and look for it. Um, I do still play Pokemon Go. It's been a while since I've logged on because I've been doing this. What's your best guess on JD Amber Heard case results? I think if Johnny Depp is going to win, it's going to be on the headline that she reshared or retweeted. I think that if Amber Heard is going to win, it's because the jury believed her. And I think it is still very possible that the jury finds that nobody defamed anybody and they all walk away with an L. Out, just outside um, MPLS, or as we like to call it now, Mogadishu 2.0 pout. I don't know where MPLS is, but thank you, Mike, the dad Crosby. I appreciate that. Um, thank you. Thank you for the super stickers. First time First live here, turned into your videos a few times in the past and been watching cons uh, consistently you for the last month. I am a Lawnard. Welcome, Lawnard, and thank you for letting me know. Catnip tip for the Pawnards, from my Pawnards to your, thank you, Governor. <laughs> it's my first time here and we're excited to be here. Thank you. Good to see you. I love you so much. Thank you, Lauren Wolf. I'm going back to watch your full coverage of the Debt versus Hurt. It's a lot. I mean, you've got a week, but it's a lot. Thank you so much for your insight. You're welcome. There's also roundups on the Emily Show podcast if you want to just listen to them. I do a week-by-week -week breakdown on the podcast. Those come out every Wednesday at The Emily Show. It is on all of your favorite podcasting apps. So if you don't want to just have YouTube on in the background or don't have YouTube Premium to do that, um, The Emily Show podcast version is available for you. It is, it's been charting worldwide. It's it's wild. It, the support has been um it's been absolutely incredible. There just really aren't words, um, truly. <clears throat> Elizabeth Turner said, hello, Elizabeth Turner. <laughs> not pirates related, not pirates, Emily, not pirates related. Can rebuttal witnesses, Moss and others, testify if they've seen clips of the trial given how inescapable the trial has been and they aren't anticipating appearing? They would have had to have been given the same witness admonitions that the others were given that they cannot watch any evidence about the trial unless they are expert witnesses. Expert witnesses like Dr. Hughes and Dr. Curry can absolutely keep track of what's going on in the trial, but lay witnesses or regular people, muggle witnesses cannot do that. So if they had seen that, they could not give live testimony. If they're testifying by deposition or those depositions will be played, then it is kind of irrelevant. Hopefully that answers that. Question, what do you think about the Amber Heard PR guy and the claims against him? Haven't seen it. Should Amber Heard dismiss him? I am definitely not a PR expert, PR expert. I think it's something the team needs to talk about this week. I'm starting to feel bad for her. If that's true and he did not disclose that to her and she is in this type of a case and he is facing those types of allegations, I would absolutely feel bad for her um, because then it almost feels like people are taking advantage of the stress of the situation to get their 15 minutes and that's not okay either. Everyone deserves, no matter how much you like them or don't, people deserve to have a competent team around them, good lawyers, and if you need PR, good PR. Um, Street Alley Cat said, T in Chicago, new here, love your channel, welcome Lawnard. Question, I am sure you'll get to this, but why do you think Ben Chu was so happy Amber mentioned Kate Moss? P.S. I'm terrified of turkeys. They can be very scary. They're very big, Man in Black 1988. But I did cover that at the beginning of the stream for the replay crew. It'll be time stamped. A door was opened. What dimension the door was open to, we don't know. It was, it was opened perhaps to the multiverse of madness of this trial, and we will see. Elizabeth White said, question, can we talk about the contradiction between Amber's testimony of JD becoming hysterically violent, went on substances, and the photographic evidence of him totally passed out, unmoving in various chairs? I mean, her photos have been consistent with his testimony. He testified that he was addicted to painkillers due to a back injury, and he would be on the nod when he took them. Her photos are completely consistent with that. So it's not consistent with her testimony. I don't know if she notices that. Simi, thank you so much. First time watching you live and I love it. I'm from North Dakota. Welcome in from North Dakota. Good morning, Emily, and happy early birthday to you. Happy early birthday to you, Amanda Joe. You'll be 33 tomorrow. We love, we, we love fun numbers. 33 is a fun number. That's fun. I'm kind of glad court is dark this week so I can catch up on what I missed. I'm, girl, same. <laughs> same. Same. Congratulations on 321. You're welcome. I don't know why we haven't binged over here yet. Um, I'm sitting over here watching Lawn Lumber's subscriber numbers go up as we're shouting out the channel. And that's kind of fun too. Thank you, Lawnards. Um, 
It's nice to see you again on my 30th birthday. Also 331. That's crazy. Congratulations. 331? It can't be 331. But thank you, Cody. I'm assuming that means 321. Um, happy 30th birthday. 30, dirty 30 is a lot of fun. 30 is fun. Like the fucks run out somewhere around 30 and life becomes a lot more fun. Um, thank you for the congratulations, Alejandra. I commented so many times on how much I love your coffee mug. I woke up Mother's Day to one sitting in front of my Keurig. Tracy, that's incredible. Cheers to your spouse for being amazing. Thank you for what you do. You're amazing. Thank you so much. That's what a great present. Greetings from Wyoming. Love your take on Depp versus Heard and all other trials. Questions. How would you cross-examine Amber Heard? Um, you catch more flies with honey. So I would start being firm but kind. And after that, I would um I would change, I would change strategy if she started getting brazen. Don't you get brazen with me? If she started getting brazen, I would change it. Are you trying to tell me I have an orthodontic appointment? Thank you, dear. My husband's writing a note to me on I have a large whiteboard, well, a pink whiteboard to the side. And he is reminding me that I have an Invisalign appointment. I lost one of my little nubby things. Um, probably TMI that you guys need to know. I try not to wear them when I stream because they make me sound a little funny. Um, Catherine said, Emily, I had, I have had the shittiest month. I'm sorry. And your channel and commentary have been the single highlight of this dark time. I appreciate your humor, brilliance, and dedication to your followers. Thank you for bringing me joy. Catherine, it will pass. This too will pass. You are strong and you are a survivor. Thank you so much for the kind words. The Lawnard community is the greatest community on the internet. I said what I said. People can fight me. The Lawnards are the greatest. The Lawnards are the greatest hands down. Question, do Amber and Johnny get to leave Virginia during this court break? Um... It depends on what their legal teams need from them. And it depends on whether that would be disruptive to them. I mean, they fly on private jets and shit. So would that be hard for them to get away and get a break? I don't know. Maybe I don't, it, it really is going to depend on what their legal team says they're needed for. They can do what they want. They're not obligated to be anywhere. They're obligated to be back in court on May 16th. Shells. Thank you so much. We do make a lot of Harry Potter references here. Um, Yo boy, Gary said, found you through legal bites. Love what you do. Thank you. I did the Amber waves of pain song. Feel free to use it. Uh, you rock miss Kersey words. Thank you. I will go look for it for sure. Um, thank you guys for the super stickers. I'm going to try to pull them all up if I can. Thanks for changing your travel plans. Our babysitters are cool, but thanks for not leaving us mama law. PS. I am here for law nerd. You merch. We're working on it. Kat. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We changed our travel plans. My kids are going to be a little tired. It's all going to be fine. Um, a viral flow. Never in my life did I thought I would get into law. I mean, that's completely fair, but you did it. We did it. I can't watch anyone else besides you though. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I realize that I, I have my own vibe on how I do things. Um, oh, and happy birthday. May, my 22nd was Friday. Happy birthday to you on Friday, the day before mine. What does it mean when something bings behind you? Alana, great question. This little counter normally keeps up with my channel subscriptions and it will actually make a sound that sounds like a bing and turn over to new subscribers. Sometimes it does that in the 1000. Sometimes it does that when it's multiple thousands. It has not done it uh, today. I don't know why, but it takes a while sometimes to get the information from the back end of YouTube to the counter. But right now the counter is at uh, sit and study at 318. So <laughs> maybe it's stuck. Maybe we broke the binger. Did we break the binger? We might have broken the binger. New Laundry here. Love your channel and insight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I mean, I need to update my intros. I have been an attorney, gosh, almost 17 years now and did over 10 years as a trial lawyer. So I really enjoy watching trial lawyers do their things. I try not to be overcritical of small mistakes unless they're humorous. Like, you don't know if it was my cat searching. Humorous moment. Everybody says stuff in court that just kind of comes out of your mouth and you're like, oh, is that really making the point I was trying to make? But when it comes to these hearsay objections, I was getting, I was, I was getting annoyed. Kelly says, why was JD's team so happy that Amber Heard mentioned Kate Moss? Talked about it at the beginning of the stream. It'll be time stamped. Um, I think it opened the door for testimony that they very much wanted to get in. And also, if she made a mistake in her testimony that allows them to get something in, it's kind of fun. Emily is going full Elaine in her show prep <laughs> a little bit. Have they or will they do lie detector tests? They won't. They're generally not admissible in court. The jury is the lie detector here. Paper Mario, please check out Woodworker Attorney's bed debunking video. I already have. Um, I think Rob is great. 
Hailing from Hoboken, New Jersey. Love your sassy self. You're welcome. Thank you from Hoboken. We love Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, not only do I have family there, but the Penguins of Madagascar TV show always talked about Hoboken, which always uh, delighted me and my kids. So hello back at you. Miko said first live, um, energy black cherry Mio. Jury's still out on the energy. Added collagen, it thing to do. BPD, ADHD here. Treatable, love watching. Thank you. I have collagen in my coffee, so I hear you. Can plaintiff demand that a firm take out costs before fees? Um, they can try to, but most attorneys' offices aren't going to change their fee structure and the way that they do that. But I think it's always worth asking if you're going to do a contingency attorney, you need to look at is it going to be cost before fees or fees before cost? I think it should be cost before fees. I do. I do. Veil of Pain, have you watched Law and Lumber? Yes. Um, debunking that bed. Um, splinter pick with a folded Stanley knife hidden in the bed creases. I saw, I would love to see what you think. I think it's amazing. I thought Rob's video was great and happy to see LawTube growing. Love seeing you get thousands of new subscribers. It's wild. Can't wait for you to hit a million. Me too, Jeff Ray. And you know what my kids will say? Well, I mean, it's only 1 million, <laughs> which we love. Front end showing 321, three bings in 30 minutes. That's wild. Um, but I think the binger's broken, but thank you, JC. It's, I mean, we've, we've definitely grown here and it's been a lot of fun. Um, finally caught alive. Thank you. You're welcome. Light Marie question. If audio from Australia disproves Amber's testimony, can it really not be admitted? Even though parts were played in the UK, the audio proves she lied. Monica, it depends on the foundation for the evidence. It depends on if there's third parties in that, that have testified, not testified. It's going to depend on the court's ruling. So yes, the court can keep out audio that might be helpful if it is not able to be admitted as evidence. If And even if parts were played in the UK, the UK system is different than the US system. So we're going to have to wait to see. It might come up on cross. It might not. Um, Kaken, I hope I pronounced that right. Finally a member and it's my birthday. So for me, it's a perfect day. Yay. Love from Sweden with my partnered cat, Hoseki. Happy, happy birthday. Jennifer said, I work in the mental health field. We are watching in real time, both the effects of mental illness on individuals who have them and those who love them. This is sad. It is a deeply sad case. And the spectacle of it and the memeing of it has kind of gotten away from at the end of the day, these are people who were in a very toxic relationship that played out in a very negative way. I honestly think for both of them, one of them absolutely might have gotten it worse than the other, but I don't think either of them were happy in this relationship. Um, Adam said, watching you live from Iraq, but I'm from the UK, working away from home. Love your content, Emily, in this community. Adam, thank you for commenting. Hope all is well. And this community is the best. Do you think DA has proven beyond a reasonable doubt against Johnny? Um, also, could she be charged with her lies and fraudulent charges? Lying under oath can be perjury. Will it be prosecuted criminally is something I'm not comfortable to say until we see all of the rest of her testimony. Do I think domestic abuse has been proven? I think the jury could find some of the statements and text abusive, but they weren't to her. Um, some of the audio fights they might find abusive. So it's really going to depend on what the jury decides. Um, would it be enough for a prosecution like of Johnny Depp? I don't think we're there with that. And we haven't seen all the evidence yet. So we'll get there. Um, is there a video of you reacting to Dr. C's cross? No, there isn't, but I talk about it in the week three roundup of the Emily show podcast. Did you catch when Amber Heard paused in the middle of dabbing her eyes with a tissue for the press to take a picture while she was on the stand? I did. And I saw a lot of comments when I was talking about that. Like, is it a camera flash? Uh, Y'all were right. There are not camera flashes in the courtroom. Um, it was a monitor flash. It looked like a flash to me but the monitor does change and flash, but she did wait till the camera seemed were done. I didn't listen closely enough to hear if you could hear the camera shutter click, but yes, we talked about that. It'll be timestamped. Laura Amica heard, I mean, right? From Amica Cream, Dr. Curry, Laura Amber heard, it's been hard. And I can understand the Amica Cream because when you see Arnica Cream, the R and the N can look like an M. Like I can understand misreading that. What I can't understand is not talking to your client enough to know that your client is saying Amica cream. Damn it. To know that your client is not saying Arnica cream versus Amica cream. Like it's one of those things where you would have that conversation with your client. I would think, did you say that we talked about that early on in the show? Um, it sounded like lawyer Amber heard when she said it possibly. 
Oh my God. The Tom Girardi case is wild. It is. What's your take on Amber Heard saying, did you drink this whole thing instead of that whole thing when Johnny Depp was supposed to be holding a bottle? Um, I haven't heard that, but it might have been that she was holding it. Her tenses have been very weird in her testimony. She does a lot and says a lot in present tense. On cross and rebuttal, can the plaintiff introduce evidence and or witnesses that aren't on the list in Fairfax County website? Basically things that the public can't see. There are circumstances where you can bring in evidence for impeachment purposes, meaning to prove someone is not telling the truth that is not necessary to be disclosed to the other side. So it wouldn't be on these witnesses yet, but those circumstances are limited. And I don't know if this court has made an internal ruling to this case where that can't happen. So in general, yes, it's possible. How possible is it in this case? I'm not sure. It's going to depend on the judge's rulings. And I haven't seen anything where the judge has said, you can't, you have to disclose all impeachment. Normally you don't have to disclose it all. Excuse me. Did you see the video debunking the bed breaking? I did. Have you heard the audio from after his fingers was cut off? I have not pretty damning. Can either one of these be used by Johnny Depp's team? Um, not in court formally, but for information purposes, not sure how admitting evidence works. These are not things that are evidence. Um, these are information for them, but they don't have these witnesses on the witness list. They don't have um, this evidence in an admissible way, the audio may be, but the woodworking is more of a noted. Um, it looks so odd anyway, that I don't think they're giving much credence to the bed because the pictures are so, the pictures are such a dichotomy to the testimony. Do you think Amber Heard's time jumping around was a strategy by her team to make it more difficult for the jury to follow the inconsistencies? It's possible. Or it's because she doesn't remember, but it's possible that it's, It felt to me like Elaine was trying to keep her linear, but it was very difficult to follow. But it felt like, can you tell us about 2012? Can you tell us about this? I felt like Elaine was trying to keep it linear. Um, So I don't know how much strategy it is. It might just be the way it is. Question, will the same experts witnesses um, recorded depots be used in Amber's own lawsuit? I don't know if I can take another six weeks. No, there's not another six weeks. This case is done the 27th. We're in Amber's case. She has to prove it all now. So no, you're not going to get cumulative evidence. She'll be posting things. How did none of us catch the wrong name thing? Law and Lumber, I caught it. There was just never a time to bring it up. I talked about it in the podcast, but I don't know if I circled back around. But it's good to see you in the chat. And yes, I caught it on my live. I was like, wait a second, that's odd. But as I was reflecting back on it, I'm like, how many times did she get names wrong? A third party for Whitney Sears incident, her former boss testified that she lied. She is called Jennifer Howell. Um, not in this case yet. And I wonder if that's why Whitney didn't finish her, finish her deposition. I talked about this yesterday with, uh, the Hogue law legal panel. I wonder if this is why the, um, deposition wasn't finished that Whitney was in a position. And this is my speculation. I just wonder if Whitney was in a position where it is either perjure yourself or say something really damaging to Amber Heard. And instead she's like, (laughs) I'm sick. I can't testify. So I just wonder if that's, if that's what happened. So I've created a timeline based on Amber Heard's testimony. Well, if you share it on social, please tag me. I'd love to see it or DM me. If it's somewhere, I'd love to see it. Have you seen the video by the lawyer woodworker? Yes, we have seen law and lumber law and lumber is great. Did you catch the picture of the bruise on Amber's arm? Yes. When asked how you got it, she goes into a story where Johnny hits her in the face multiple times, yet the picture shows zero bruises to her face. Yes. I talked about that the day of the testimony and Logan over on Observe just broke down this part of the testimony. What I caught at the beginning of Logan's video, because the more I watch this, the more I catch. And this is where Amber Heard's at a disadvantage. Johnny Depp's attorneys have a week, not just to read transcripts, but to watch her testimony back. Like you never get that unless the trial's streamed. They can go watch all of her testimony back if they want to. I didn't catch this until I saw Logan talking about it on Observe. And he played the clip and she started to say that she threw something and then backed it up with that bruise, with that period of the bruise on the arm. And it was interesting. So what about Whitney's old boss? I don't know if Whitney's old boss will come in because I don't think Whitney can testify. Doesn't this directly contradict her testimony where she got between Whitney and Depp? Yes, it does. And that will come up. It also contra- is contradicted by Travis McGivern's testimony. Love your channel. Recently subbed fellow Taurus. Thank you. Um, Melia, Melena, no, Manila, Manila, Shirley. Thank you. I'll get there eventually. 
Um, sometimes. Polina said, I started watching you four days ago and now I'm rewatching the trial with your commentary. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Glad you found us. Mira or Mirna said, how awesome would it be if Depp brought case Kate Moss to rebut Amber's testimony? There's, there's two sides to that. They have to not bring too much attention to it to make a sideshow. The, the point is to show that Amber Heard is lying. The point is not to turn it into an ancillary point where they forget all the other lies. So that has to be dealt with in a way to balance how, how much it helps them versus how damaging it is to her versus making it a whole other issue where the jury forgets everything else that's happened. A legion of litigators. Yes. It's like a flying fucking fleet of litigators. Zoe said, unless Whitney was trying to keep Johnny from leaving and Johnny was in the middle of a sandwich. It's odd testimony about like the, where everybody was standing. Um, Sandy said, giving to your husband's muffin fund. We definitely need him to pick up muffins. By the end of this trial, you should be able to get poppy seed muffins instead of 7-Eleven muffins um, and brag to pawn nerds. I will absolutely brag to the pawn nerds that the muffins were bought by my husband for me and we will have, mu muffins will happen. We will make muffins happen. This trial's helped me. This trial helped me. What a poop I was living with was um, hard cried, but had to get out of here before she convinced it was convinced it was me to everyone know your worth. It's hard, really stuck in a dark tunnel, finally see the light. Well, Robert, congratulations. I'm glad. I think this trial has probably shed a lot of light for a lot of people, especially some of the doctor testimony, which is why I was hoping Dr. Hughes would be good and shed a light on these cycles of violence that don't get talked about enough. And then she was not good. Melissa said, with being so close to the jury, do they see no tears? The jury will see everything. So yes, if they're paying attention to that, they are close enough to do that. Emily said, if you were doing Amber Heard's cross, what would your strategy be? Um, firm, but kind, and then let her be the one that's aggressive first. So many inconsistencies and direct, but would trying to cover everything be less impactful? Yes. Um, I think they need to go for the most important ones, including the donations and not give her a chance to explain, stick to those real tight. Yes. No questions and make it look like she's being evasive or if she is being evasive, not make it look like she's being evasive. Make sure the jury can tell if she's trying to be evasive. That's something that Herd's team did not do well. When witnesses weren't answering the question, they were yelling over them instead of doing things like that didn't answer my question. Trying again, your honor, can you please instruct the witness to answer the question? There are ways to not just direct the witness, but point out to the jury, this witness is evading this question. And when her team just kept yelling over people in cross, you don't get the realization that they're evading the question. It just looks like the, the examiner or the questioner, the lawyer is badgering the witness. It doesn't look like the witness is the one being evasive. And there were times when Depp's witnesses weren't answering the direct question and control could have been gotten better. Throughout the trial, I've observed Amber Heard throwing shade with looks and notes to her legal team. Her legal team is having to placate Amber Heard, which, by the way, is the MO for people who work with her. Seems to be. Um, did you see the clip of Umbridge's face when Amber said that it was on a different feed? I didn't, Heather, but I will go look for it, and we'll talk about it Friday. Apparently, a slap doesn't count as hitting. No, Cameron. Apparently, according to Dr. Hughes, it is a minimal act of violence. Hear me out. Mo said she's telling us that he either used his hand with a major injury to grip a bottle um, or he used his other hand while his hand squirted out blood. It, there's a lot of inconsistencies between the photos and the testimony. Mitchie said my understanding is Amber Heard never turned her phone over and now it's too late. It is too late. Does this mean there's no way for them to avoid the jury being told she didn't turn it in? I think so. I think it has to come out in a jury instruction. Does the jury get to keep their notes after the trial? Um in most jurisdictions, they do not get to keep their notes after the trial. So no, generally not. They get turned back into the court. Um, Jonas asked, have you watched the video by Lon Lumber? I have absolutely watched it. Um, I think it's a great video. Chelsea said, I have seen, I haven't seen anyone talk about Jennifer Gray coming out to say that Johnny Depp could be jealous and paranoid thoughts. I haven't seen those statements. Um, but I also, from some of the testimony, I think, they're either, yes, he was jealous and a bit paranoid, or he had reason to be jealous because he thought she was cheating or she was cheating. I definitely think there's some jealousy and control there for sure. Depp's team submitted a motion for failure to comply. Yes, the motion for sanctions. Grant said on Johnny Depp's witness list, he has a box check that says any witnesses required for rebuttal or impeachment. Does that mean they can bring in Kate Moss? Um I don't know if they will, but if she's on the witness list, they can. If she's been deposed, she they can. There's there's ways that they can. 
Joanne said, did you see Ellie B's video yesterday showing Amber Heard secretly recording her friend after giving depot for Johnny Depp's side? She backtracked on the recording. I did not see that. I'm trying, trying, trying to stick to the stuff that the jury is seeing. Um, but there is, there's no avoiding the other stuff in the, in the, you know, atmosphere of the internet. Paula said, plus she has 26 plus hours. Yes. Um, Eleanor said, I still cannot figure out how Amber is walking in heels in that Jerry judge recording. That's some quick recovery. That's a very fair point. Um, especially with her feet shredded real good as she testified to AA said, if there is, if there was new evidence that came out during this trial that contradicts the UK trial, can there be a motion to reopen or reconsider the verdict? Not in the UK. That case is closed and done. They asked when it came out that she had lied about the donations, which the judge seemed to give great weight to, they asked to appeal it and it was denied. So no. Span said Ben Chu's opposition speech was my favorite part of last week, not getting the love it deserves because of all the ridiculousness that followed. I give it a lot of love in the podcast episode that comes out tomorrow. I thought it was a preview to closing. I think Ben Chu will give a great closing. Uh, Rottenborn does a good job arguing too. His style is not as fluid um, as Ben Chu's, but I think he gave a good opening. Rottenborn's opening I thought was better than Umbridge's, and we'll see. I think Rottenborn will give a good closing. I just don't think he has good facts to work with. Carla Jean, this is going to be a whole thing. Um, excited to be a honored. Welcome. Amber Heard's body language is screaming deception. Uh, I've seen all of the body language experts seem to agree on this one. Um, clothing, et cetera. She is playing Johnny in this trial. She might be trying to. Seriously, try to pick your nose with the same hand positions. It doesn't work. Jen, that is a great point. I I, I will do an experiment on my own. Not on stream. <laughs> For the December 15th incident, she claimed that there was blood all over the pillows and yet she took a picture of the bed and it looks like fake evidence. A lot of this stuff does seem to not match. Do law firms allow observation or volunteering without being a current law student? Sometimes I want to see if law is the right path before applying to law school. Um, Brianna, a lot of times they will, they will. And you can also go in and watch court, but yes, there are programs that you can go into to not just help and work with them, but there were programs I did in undergrad with the courts as well. So there are lots of opportunities. Um, yes, lots of opportunities. So I would reach out and find those. Um, there are lots of different kinds of laws. So I would reach out and look. Ginger Grave said, is the open, is the door only open for Kate Moss or for all past relationships? I don't know. Enjoy the coverage and your professional non-bias take on it. I try to point out where I have biases the best that I can see them because I think we all come in with preconceived notions to things. And I try to point those out. And the lawyer side of me is able to say, I think this, and I kind of want this to be true, but also this is what I'm seeing and try to point out my thought process. So we all can develop our critical thinking skills together. So thank you. I try. I want to see what the evidence shows in this case. I really do. I want to see what the evidence shows and what the jury does. That's what I'm looking for. Is it possible the leak that Johnny Depp is dating Vasquez could be to a setup to prove that Amber Heard is jealous and could cause her to be more reactive during cross. I've not seen that. I don't know. It could just be internet speculation. It, it might cause a reaction to that, but it could just be internet speculation. Um, I think it would, I mean, it wouldn't be a conflict in the sense that you would bring it to the court's attention because that's a client, but I also haven't looked at the rules of professional responsibility in Virginia. I think it would be an odd circumstance. Um, but could them being close in court be clocked by Amber Heard and then annoy her? Possibly. Could that be trial strategy? Possibly. Trials like 3D chess. It could be some kind of oil to make her cry. It absolutely could be with the nose. Um, to me, what is more believable is that it's menthol to make her cry. Michelle, I agree with you. Um, Hazel said, I'm dyspraxic and I still know where my nose is. It's an excellent point, Hazel. She was like, Ivy said running late to the stream because I just watched observes new video. Have you seen it? Yes. I thought it was great. I'm waiting for the rest of the parts. I'm willing to buy Logan more internet at this point because I just want to see him talk about all the things question. Could she have been spelling something like smelling salts to make her eyes water? Totally possible. I'm so behind in chats and I'm trying to zoom zoom because I have an interview that I have to get to after this. Do you think the jury will take account that Johnny Depp's team sometimes laughs at Amber Heard's testimony? I think it might seem distasteful to them. Yes. I would look at it as not taking this seriously. In my opinion, it does not look good. Stephanie, I don't disagree with you. It could seem very disrespectful to the um, to the jury. I think she's for sure. I don't know if she's on a prescription or not. Um, actors sometimes pull their nose hairs to make themselves cry. That sounds painful. I don't even know how you would 
to that with one finger, but okay. She was posing for a picture. That was the later uh, evidence. Did you see where she hid her secondary water bottle in her pocket when the female bailiff walked by? I did. It seemed odd. There's been a lot of odd stuff. Who knows why people do what they do? Maybe they're only allowed to have one water bottle at council table. It's possible. Um, Not sure a woman so image focused is going to wipe the nose so obviously with the hand too, unless it's for performative reasons. Pose was hilarious. It's an excellent point. I'm going to try to get to um, questions as much as I can, if not getting to all the comments, because I do have a hard stop in a few minutes. Um, so just letting you know, you guys, thank you for the super chats. I am going to try to speed run and get to all of them. Um, it doesn't look good. What about the silver bottle she hid in her pocket? I don't know. It was odd. Can we all remember that courtrooms have a lot of security? Yes, they do. Um, courthouses have a lot of security and this courthouse is going to have a lot of security because the public is coming in. Um, so I think it's more likely that she was trying to make herself cry. I did see the bottle. I thought it was odd. She wanted the jury to see her wiping her nose. Very, very true. Doesn't JD's team have bigger fish to fry than nose picking? Yes. Yes, they do. But the internet doesn't. The internet's, we're all very curious about the odd things. So I don't think, I don't, I don't, I can't fathom it either. I can't. Can you forward some bit to see? Oh, we did do that one. Thank you. Hello. Um, they said the camera flash are not allowed in the courtroom though. So maybe it was light from the screen. I think um, it was absolutely light from the screen, Adriana. I think so. Um, and I, I totally pronounced your name wrong. Apologies. Kim said, I think she's trying to make her nose look red. Maybe, but yes, I don't think flashes are allowed. I think it was the monitor change. I saw on a stream breaking down the tissue issue, <laughs> the tissue issue. They said it was not a drug. It was suggested to be an irritant. Probably. Can Depp's lawyers somewhere at the trial point out Amber's sister would not make herself available. No, she just won't be available. Have you seen the stories about Amber Heard's PR guy? Nope, but we will have to talk about it on Friday. I'll have to take a look. Um, can you just ask? There are 34,000 people watching this live stream. Can you just ask her if she is watching? LOL, love your channel. Enjoying all of Law Tubes. How was your birthday? Good. Hope you took some time off. Not enough. <laughs> but we will. We've got vacation coming up. We're going to work until then. Do you think the jury may be uncomfortable with how much she keeps looking at them? Yes, they very well could be. Uh, monitor flash, not camera flash. Thank you for that. Uh, nose wiping force a habit. Possibly. Um, possibly. I'm shocked Amber Heard's side has less time available than depth since they started with their witnesses. It seems like so much wasted time on Amber Heard's side talking about makeup muffins. Uh, they did. They had to do a long cross of Johnny Depp for sure. So we'll see. Thank you for the tissue gate. The bed has a pocket knife in it. If you zoom in, I will go back and look at those pictures. I know that um, Rob addresses it on Lawn Lumber. With the posing for a picture, if you see the image of her and Johnny side by side, they both have a flash. Okay, so the monitors for sure. Question, will the jury be able available during, what will the jury have available during deposition transcripts of testimonies, audio of pictures? Oh, during deliberation. So when they, when they, when they get together and decide the case, it's deliberation. They have to ask for items of evidence from the court, but all the evidence is available to them. If they want to hear live testimony back, they generally get pulled into court and have it read back to them, but not always. Sometimes they do that without the lawyers present. So if cameras are still rolling while the jury's deliberating and they want read back, they should come into court and get read back. So we will, we will see what happens. But yes, they have all of the evidence admitted into evidence they have available to them. Laura said, I'm going to have to take all this information plus supposedly Photoshopped image that the W that the, that the WP has and now rewatch all of her testimony. I mean, we're definitely investigating here sometime. Proud to join the Lawnard Legion. Thank you, Meredith. Um, seen the YouTube clip where she reaches for her drink bottle and then puts it in the pocket. I have, it's odd. Um, so thank you. The flash is the exhibit change in the monitor. Fair enough. Could she face additional charges for perjury? I'm not there yet, but if I see anything, I will let you know. I have tried a criminal perjury case coming out of a civil case, so I will talk about it. Someone in a different YouTube video said that the jury had to look elsewhere because they were uncomfortable with Amber Heard constantly looking at them. If someone in court is observing that, that would be interesting to note um, because people might be seeing that. Um, I think she's a horrible client. She might be. She she might she might be very difficult to work with. 
What do you think about the new PR, PR guy? I don't, I haven't looked into it. I'm starting to think Amber Heard is not good at hiring people. Possibly. Um, Law and Lumber hadn't seen the release. It's an ex party effing procedure, right? Um, this is infuriating. So misleading that PR team needs to take a short walk. Law and Lumber, I appreciate that you are mirroring my outrage on that PR statement. What's your feelings about how Amber would stare at Johnny Depp when he was on the stand, but he wouldn't look back at her. I think the jury will clock it and notice it's not behavior I've seen from people who are facing their abuser. Why doesn't the court issue an order prohibiting PR statements by each party spokesperson? I think there's a limit on trial publicity. I don't know if this goes against it. I would need to go back and look. Um, but normally there are orders like that and the court might reiterate them to counsel privately. So, um, but there's not much the court can do about it at this point. The shit's kind of out of the horse. I don't know if we'll see any other PR statements. Um, we wouldn't be here if the UK judge would have conducted due diligence. I think we'd still be here. Uh, this suit was filed before that was decided. I think we'd still be here. I think once this suit was filed, there's no going back from it. Um, I think it opened the door for something. I think the DV arrest is coming in no matter what. Um, we talked about the PR statement. He called it a squabble. Amber Heard called it light injuries. The broken nose is still hard to believe. Let's see. Do court photographers? No, they don't. It was the it was the monitor flash. And thank you all for pointing that out. It was Amber's team that did, and I haven't even seen flash on the cameras. It's just in my mind, it it seems like a camera flash, but it's definitely a monitor flash. It was Amber's team that did their best to send no pictures to Johnny's team and stalled sending them so much speaks for itself. That's the PR statement sure does excited to have you going back through this. I plan on watching her testimony again. Cause it was, cause I was yelling at my phone and felt like I missed stuff. I definitely missed stuff. I'm sure I apologize all the time because I learned from young that saying, sorry, calm down arguments, Hannah. That's a very, very fair point. Um, the lawyers for Johnny should have responded to issuing a statement. Does that accurately depict the scene depicted? <laughs> The shade's brilliant. Um, my abuser almost never apologized. Well, I apologized dozens of times for raising my voice, being sad, not doing what they wanted. Weird argument. Ag I agree with you. It's, it's, I agree with you. Um, Hughes is a biased doctor. Well, the jury's going to decide on that. Amber's the only one who admitted hitting and she uses uh, dead witnesses as a witness who can't confirm her story. Hughes was interesting. What lip gloss do you use? I generally use... Uh, Gerard Cosmetics. I have a link in the chat. What's your favorite lip moisturizer? Uh, these ones by Laneige, the lip sleeping mask. They come in a bunch of different uh, scents. I always want to say flavors. They're not flavored, but a bunch of different scents. This is my favorite moisturizer. And I would show you a lip gloss, but they are in my purse at the moment. So thank you. If Amber heard Gaslight and told JD he did things during times of unconsciousness would impede his ability to tell what is real. It almost implicates Amber Heard. We'll see what the jury thinks and how it's argued. This Virginia court, hours long audio and evidence, they do. It does appear to support what we've heard in general so far. Unfortunately, one tape in evidence has JD not disavowing the plane kick. Um, and I think they addressed it, but we'll see how it gets. Um, we'll see how it gets parsed. So keep hearing law tubes say over and over. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Yeah. What are other bizarre things Amber has done in court? Oh gosh. I talk about a lot of that in the podcast tomorrow. She describes things differently than I've ever seen witnesses describe it. Um, all her testimony, there were moments that felt very true. And there were a lot of moments that were very, very odd, very odd to me. In the staircase incident, didn't Johnny and Amber say Whitney was in the middle, but Travis said he was in the middle. I don't remember what Johnny said Travis said he was in the middle and there was no room for Whitney. And I don't remember what Johnny said. I'd need to go back and look. So I would need to go back and look what will happen if Johnny wins and Amber can't afford to pay the 50 million collections are difficult. I don't know if the money's about it, but he can garnish her wages, go after her property. He can continue to fight in court over the money he's owed. We'll be probably talking about that more in the Cardi B Tasha K case. Have you seen the rumors regarding David Shane? No, but I will go look for them later. Can we talk about her cleaning him up? I'm, when she's supposedly fecal phobic again, going to embarrassment and trying to embarrass him. Um, so panic that they're objecting to their own questions. A very fair point. So panic that they snicker and doodle top argument. Fair point. Do you think Amber owns that Jersey? I'm not sure what that's referring to. I hope Vasquez points out that these videos used in court were all from Amber heard herself. 
Um, I think that she will probably ask about it. I don't know if she can indicate that they are illegally recorded, but I think she can ask that they were recorded without consent. And Depp's already talked about that. Now they're trying to say that Johnny is dating Camille because they're scared to death of her cross-examination. So they're trying to discredit her, which is really disrespectful to do to any attorney, but to a female attorney, it's particularly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sexist. Not to mention, isn't he also visually impaired? Yes. Maybe that's why he's not looking at her. It's a fair point. Do you think Hurd is going to have any witnesses? She has to have some. Uh, she's already had one and then herself. I think there will be more. Johnny told Amber that she will never have the pleasure of looking at him in his eye ever again. Well, he's definitely holding to that and she seems very bothered by it. Your channel has helped me through my psychology finals. Hopefully not by distracting you, Bimbo channel. Thanks so much for being an amazing commentator and wish you the best week. Thank you. Oh, we've got a, we've got a book. Um, what would you have told Depp and Heard to do differently if you had been their respective lawyer? Oh, that sounds like an entire new video. And what, if anything, do you like that the Amber Heard's team has done? They've had some good moments in cross. They've been collegial with the judge. Um, they seem to have not taken themselves too seriously. Like when Bretta Hoff said the wrong name, she was like, oh. I mean, those are moments that can be endearing to the jury. Um, I think Bretta Hoff did a good job trying to rein in Amber Heard. Not a great job with the objections. I think she's working with what she has. I think they believe their client and are zealous advocates for their client. If Amber Heard has fecal phobia, how, that's a very good point. Reading this statement makes me wonder if Ms. Heard's PR rep works for the Sun or the Daily Mail. I mean, Amber's focus when hiring PR was the ability to slander and play dirty versus actual tactics, skill, and knowledge. Possibly. Such snarky, taunting, bizarre PR statement by Amber's team suggests that her team is, in fact, freaking out. I bet that Johnny team's, Johnny's team thinks it's amusing. Terry, I agree with you. I think they do. Survivors are commonly given paper to draw on or write in court since they're very commonly and understandably don't want to look at their abusers and are very triggered by the testimony. Yep. Johnny is such a coward that he wanted to make the hearing public while Amber Heard tried to stop that from happening. A very fair point. A uh, quick question that I've discovered with friends and we all agree. Do you think Amber is just uncoachable? Possibly. I think she knows how she wants to do things and isn't going to listen. The PR statement is consistent with her victim shaming and bullying. Um, why was the jury not allowed to hear the motion to dismiss? Because it's argument that is outside of what they need to consider. That's argument for the judge. And it's not arguing on all the testimony in court yet. So it's not proper argument for their, them to consider. They're not determining it. That's the proper jo um, job of, of the judge. So that's why. They will get closing arguments that will encompass all of the evidence. Your reaction to Hurd's PR statement confirms my suspicions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fit Bay Moves. Johnny waves to the court stenographer who needs some love during this trial and pulls out Camille's chair. The court stenographer definitely needs some love. This has got to be exhausting. Mentioning Kate Moss reiterates her efforts to defame and it's refuted. Also, she does not use a tissue from the stand. It's the tissue's weird. So a victim of DB always knows where the abuser is because their life depends on it. That surprise is fake. Um, I mean, um, law tube future drama. Channel. <laughs> I did. I let the dogs out. Sorry. <laughs> it was during a murderous conspiracy. Got distracted. By the way, I thought we were at the murderous conspiracy with Dr. Hughes. I did too. Maybe you were also washing your hair where the, while the murderous conspiracy was taking place. And that's why you missed that the dogs, in fact, were let out. Um, that is fantastic. Thank you. Remember, he is blind. Yes, I remember that testimony. Um, IYO, will jury have access to these PR statements? They should not. They should not. That statement uh, perfectly reflects the PR specialist whom was so good that you wore sneakers in the courtroom. Mm, fair greetings from Poland. Thank you. Why isn't her testimony self-contradictory when she said all she could think about during the assault was if the bottle was broken later saying she thought he was punching her until she saw I, all of it's contradictory. And most victims of SA aren't worrying if something's broken. If it's it, you, they would know just like her nose. Um, lawyers don't have fin audits for funds. They manage, they're supposed to have financial audits, but the state bar is in charge of some of those. So we will see. Doesn't her laughing about almost getting in his car after court also prove she's not scared of him. I didn't see any of that. So I don't know. I don't think she's scared of him based on her actions. Wouldn't her contradicting testimony be used against her along with extra ad? Yes, it will be. It'll come up on cross. 
Um, I'm confused what's going on in the media. Same. I watched all the testimony. Heard's team has very little evidence and most of her testimony is contradicted by witnesses. Why does the media take her side? I don't know. Um, it's very interesting watching a media perception of a case versus watching the testimony come out, which is probably why Johnny Depp wanted this, wanted cameras in the courtroom so people could decide for themselves and aren't relying on headlines. Um, I texted you. Thank you. I'll go look for it. I appreciate it. Glad you are here. Thank you. Um, Laura said, can they use footage from her depot when she's being asked about her arrest and overnight in jail for DV? Um, I don't know if they can use the video. They can ask her about it. Thank you for the support. You guys, I've got a zoom zoom. Cause I have literally got to go. Have you seen any info rumors that Dr. Hughes had her testimony stricken from multiple other cases? I have not seen any of that. I've not looked into it after the case. I will go look for it. So do you think that not being able to stop talking about herself on the stand she is proving? I don't know if the jury will see it that way. I know a lot of the internet sees it as proving um, Dr. Hughes's statement. So would you take Amber as a client? No, but I never wanted to do civil. Um, you don't get to pick your victims when it comes to criminal, but it would be a lot of conversations about the pictures not matching the testimony if there was ever going to be a filing, which would be hard to do. Apparently the new PR guys deleted his Twitter. We, I will look at it. I saw on court TV that the jury stopped taking notes and watching her testimony from your experience. What do you think of that? I think that they've checked out not taking notes is a bad sign. Hey, from, or they've already decided that they believe her and they don't care what else she has to say. It's just unlikely. Um, so have you seen the TikToks of people acting out special motions and movements Amber Heard describes in her testimony? I've not, but I will look for that. A lot of the stuff doesn't make sense. Um, not sure how to answer that. What are you going to do for 500K? We haven't even talked about it. Um, why behavioral analysis for body language on both? I'm not sure what that's referring to. Um, aren't we all just grateful one can't die of secondhand embarrassment? Yes, we are. I'm going to get to just two more super chats. And then unfortunately I do have a interview that I have to get to. If I missed it, I'm sorry. Did Elaine mention Kate Moss in her opening? I will go look for that for sure. Question, is there a hearsay exception that would let in the Australia? I would need to go look, but I think there's a stipulation regarding that evidence. Um, and I think with the stipulation, we're not going to get to it. So why ignore Amber Heard's two sleeping pills equals amnesia? I don't know. I don't think they are. Anyone read Kevin Costner's statement? That I don't think will come up in court at all. So, but we will see. It might. Um and there were a few super chats that I know that I missed and I was looking for, let me see, there were two other questions I wanted to get to. If I missed something, I am so sorry. If Amber wins, can she sue for legal fees? I think she asked for legal fees in her motion. I see one from Natalie lawyer chick. Thank you. Depp's team have this week to watch all the legal commentary and get tips. I missed coffee and cursey words. I did too. Um, Natalie lawyer chick. Thank you for the super chat. I saw it and I lost it. I was trying to pull it up. So appreciate you. Thank you so much. And if you guys haven't checked out Natalie Lawyer Chick, she is a fantastic lawyer here on the YouTube. She is a criminal defense attorney, has a lot of experience in court and great, great insights. I love watching her break things down. And she started breaking down lawyers in court during the pandemic um, when it was just Zoom court and breaking down what defense attorneys were doing well or not doing well when they were throwing their own clients under the bus. She also has some great videos on sovereign citizens and this case. It's fantastic. So Natalie does great work over on her channel. Don't forget to check it out. Uh, definitely broke the binger. Yeah, I it did. It hasn't clicked over. I don't know when it's going to click over again. Anyone seen the photos of Johnny and his lawyers? Looks like a formal suiting model shoot, not the VA ones. I have not. Um, this is in my Amazon store, so you can go check there. Happy late birthday. Thank you. Y'all, unfortunately, I have to bounce because I have committed to a podcast interview that I need to go get to. Thank you, Susie. I appreciate all of the super chats. I appreciate all of the support. I'm trying to look and see if there's any other questions I can answer real quick as I'm getting like binged that I have actually got to, got to go. Um, sorry to have to jump off so quick. I would absolutely stay and chat. I will try to capture some of these super chats so I can answer them in our next live stream, which again, we will do members only tomorrow at, um, wait, no, tomorrow's Wednesday podcast comes out tomorrow. 
members only Thursday at 11. And then we will be back for Friday night live Friday at seven. And that is when I will next see you live. I will be around the interwebs till then. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you so much. I've got to go. Thank you for your super chats and your support. I'm sorry to all the ones I didn't get to. I will try to circle back around on them and at least answer the questions when we get to Friday night live. Thank you. I will see you soon. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, monardsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.